Hello. <laughs> Alright, we're back. Manor Lords. This will be the hard mode part three, I guess. Now we're just going to pick up right where we left off yesterday. I have to do a bit of a reassessment as to the current situation, and then we can kind of get into the swing of things. I was running a little bit late today. Playing Frostpunk. And I can't wait to show it tomorrow to people. Alright, so we had just left off with a pile of dead bodies right here. The entire town, basically, got, well, the entire male adult population who were holding weapons got killed. I guess those who couldn't hold weapons, or just we didn't have enough weapons to supply them, they got away with it. So it's reset the board in a lot of ways. We have some of the bandits that did the attack were still moving off. They're not necessarily retreating, but they're just moving out that way. And then we had the bandits that came in from this side of the map that are just still sitting there, so... If that attack happens anytime soon, we're screwed, because uh, we don't have any weapons right now. We've got two war bows, but we have trader orders, I believe, to just bring us back up to stock. In fact, might have to reset this now, because... Yeah, pole arms down to 36. Let's bring that a lot further down. We'll have to kind of play the game again and go all the way back down to like 10 or something. And I'll just set this to 5, just so we can bring in some war bows to get a unit together. Alright, that'll be that. Uh, Frostpunk tomorrow, yes. Frostpunk 2 tomorrow. I can't remember what time, but... the You'll be able to pre-order the game and play the beta tomorrow, and I believe the embargo is whatever time that beta goes live. Uh, hey Darren, I only discovered your channel a month ago, but I love your CS2 series, and this is fantastic as well. Thanks, Gaming Penguin. Appreciate that. Just started? Yep, we just started. So we're picking up right where we left off at the end of the last episode, and hey, Jamie Kel Burns as well. We just moved this chat to be a bit wider. There we go. Yeah, so just before I let time play, I just wanted a quick sit rep, just to re-familiarize myself with where we are. Seven unassigned families, 23 assigned. Population is already climbing back up a bit, which is good. Rule's not too bad. The unburied bodies is a problem. We have one family assigned to burying on the corpse pit and one assigned at the church. Hmm. Anything else then that we need? We've got extra homes. We have people on the berries and on the meat. Uh, I suppose farms. It looks like farms might be ready to go. Oh, right. It actually tells you the yields just by hovering over it like that. That's kind of interesting. All right. Let's time play. So, yeah, we need to assign more people to the farms. Continue plowing again. For flax. Fence up. Allows to use a fallow field as a pasture, which in... Oh. Oh. Rapidly restores lost fertility. That's cool. Yeah, I was thinking if I was wondering if there was a kind of a way to do that. We have a random goat out here. Do we still have that pile of supplies? Yeah, we still have that other one. What a shame. Oh well. All right. So just for a recap, we had basically just barely survived. It was kind of a stalemate, really. Of a, I mean, they basically won the bandits, but they just left us alone after it because there's so little of them left, so few of them left. So the bodies are being buried. There's a lot of them. Uh, so that should bring approval back up, slowly. Um, but the problem is that we are now bottlenecked for equipment, big time. So I think I'd said yesterday that once we get some of these bodies buried and get the families off the farms, we'll start upgrading these households, because we have a lot of timber now. We need four per household, and we'll make a real go of making malt and stuff, so that we can actually, yeah, get the brewery going, make people happy, get two types of clothes. That might be a bit trickier. Although, actually, we have 23 leather, leather right now, so maybe not. It might not be too bad. Don't want to sell any of that. Just want to make sure we're not selling that. Export? Yeah, no trade. Keep the leather. We're going to need it for shoes. And we can make some passive money from the uh, houses, actually, when we start upgrading them. How many people on construction? Just two. Okay. All right. That's where we're at. You're here. I didn't think you would be. I would never let you down. Is it an early access game? It is. It actually says early access down the bottom right in very faint letters. Uh, what does the most challenging difficulty do? It makes approval much harder. It makes the bandit attacks more frequent and larger. Um, but I'm not sure what else. It probably says in the menu. I'm sure we read it on the first one, but I can't remember now. It's a couple days ago. I have to hop back out and check. But the one thing that definitely hurts is approval. Oh, and there's, um, yeah, your disasters are worse, so oh, I could definitely attest to that. The bad weather, we've been it's been raining so much, but then we had lightning storms that just set fire to, like, three or four buildings. 
Uh, whereas normally, at least in my experience playing on normal, like pretty rare to see even one building ever go up in flames. Hey Junior Jackson, I was um, stalking your Twitter because I saw you liked one of my posts. And then I clicked your name and I was having to read. You should join our Discord because you're based. <laughs> uh, I feel like I died in the last Let's Play. Did you? I don't think anyone's died in that, have they? Maybe one person. Because our units that we made... One thing I'll say just really quickly is, we, we had that battle, a lot of people died and everything, but they come back really quickly, like adult males or whatever. As long as the houses are still there and the, the you know, people are still living in them, they just tend to come back pretty quickly. Like, the number of families didn't go down. That's interesting. These, you know, you can recover your population quite quickly that way. Um, but yeah, in that Let's Play, I didn't think anyone had actually died. And I've recorded one more s that you haven't seen yet, Episode 4. And I, it, like, I sent a, almost a full army out, like three units, out into various things. And I don't think anyone dies, but maybe one or two people. Not much to stock there? No, I just, I don't know. I just I wanted to see if you were the same person, but then I was like, yeah, it definitely is. And then, yeah, just the last couple of tweets caught my attention. I only read like three or four. I didn't actually stock the account properly. <laughs> Um, but the reason I said about joining Discord is because I, I just saw that you didn't have many replies. So I was like, oh, you asked a question about the Steam Deck or something. I was like, oh, you get lots of people telling the answers in our Discord if you joined it. If you if you wanted, no pressure. Yeah, people mentioned actually you can actually adjust the curvature of the road as well. I forgot about that. Nice. All right, cool. Anyways, so what's here's the situation. 32 families here, 36 potential. We're nearly back up to the population before the attack. Unfortunately, despite the amount of bodies out here, which, by the way, I don't know if that's just now a visual glitch or something because it's not saying that there's any unbur unburied bodies anymore. There was previously. Let's see. Are they still going out and grabbing them? Maybe they are. I don't think they are. Transport. Well, two people are transporting. What about the corpse pit? Oh, no, they're doing it. They're collecting bodies. Okay, never mind. I just thought maybe when saving it, this wasn't actually there as an entity anymore. Because they are um, temporary. Yeah, we, we just saw one get buried right there. They are temporary. It says like it's a transitionary resource. It doesn't have an icon. There's no model for it. So I thought, ooh, maybe. No, it's okay. What's this? Uh, so fuel is only for two months. Firewood is a bit low. We had our firewood guy out here for family. Firewood's only low because we're selling it as soon as we get it. That's alright. I'm not too worried about it. Could get even more though, I guess. Why not build another one? Being as it's basically the backbone of our economy. Alright, cool. So, the plan at the moment is to basically try to get as much money and weapons in as possible. We might be even able to make some of our own. Uh, if we can get up to level 2 here. So, I want to start that soon. We're just waiting for the harvest... Or the crops to be ready to be growing. Once that's done, we can take everyone off the farmhouses and then just immediately start doing all these upgrades. Uh, so that's the plan. Once the upgrades are done, a lot of the houses are going to be upgraded. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And uh, they should generate a decent amount of money then. It'd be one per household per month. So maybe every month we get like 10, maybe 15. But that should help in getting in some weapons at least. Because we're struggling. So we'll see how we how we do. That's the plan. How'd you using Twitter? Thank you for reminding me to use my alt account and not my real life account when liking your tweets. <laughs> yeah, I don't normally click. It's just literally because Junior Jackson was here yesterday, and I mentioned his name specifically because he's in our my let's play, and then just seeing today, oh, like the last notification was like, oh, Junior Jackson liked your tweet, and I was like, huh. I don't normally like click into people's profiles and stuff. I j it just happened before the stream, and then he's there straight away. <laughs> and hey, Reaper, sorry if I didn't say hi to anyone. Hey, Chris, it's been a while. Well, it hasn't been that long. I've seen you in comments, actually. On a train, so we'll be able to hang out. But yeah, good to see you. I'm on YouTube 24-7, so when you drop videos, I can usually watch within the first few minutes. That was still super fast, though, because I dropped three members-only videos, and I think I'll, an hour and a half later, you were commenting on the third one. I was like, well, if you'd watched, like, the time of the length of the videos means that you must have skipped or uh, fast-forwarded or something. Which I don't mind. You know, each to their own. But I was like, hey, that's cheating. I almost thought about releasing them to members each hour. That way, no one would skip ahead. <laughs> Not that it would matter, I suppose. 
Um, but yeah, the fear of mine is that there's a looming attack on the horizon. That they might be bugged. They're not moving. And the attack that came before was four of those units. And we managed to just about survive it. And they've moved off there. And they're just waiting there now. So I'm half expecting them all to some suddenly coordinate an attack at the same time or something. New food stall opened up. Love to see it. Two times speed, baby. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I totally get, in my videos especially, I could see people uh, fast-forwarding a lot. <laughs> um, during slow slow part, parts or something, but... I don't know, the game's all atmospheric and everything. I wouldn't really want to be skipping forward through a game if I was just watching for the first time. You know? I, again, no shade. Like, if a brand new game comes out, someone uploads an hour-long video and you start watching it, do you start immediately two times speeding it? I would want to see the game a bit more, you know? I would probably skip through the video rather than uh, two times it. What I'm saying. If they were slow and boring, I usually skip at least at the last, like, outro minute. It popped and then popped up again. There we go. I watch vids at, like, 125. I watch vids at 125 so much because you can barely notice any difference there. Hey, just Gordo. Glad to hear it. Um, yeah, next video should be out for members tonight. Tomorrow's a Frostpunk video. Then I don't know what I'm going to do because I've got Frostpunk and Mana Lords in the bank at that point. Don't want to release two videos at once, so just have to alternate them, I guess. Episode 4 is awesome. 5 is going to be great. I haven't done 5 yet, but I, I imagine now we're at the size of, like, a proper army at that point, so... And you're getting more and more interesting. That was my fear with it. It's like, ah, oh, it is a slow start, you know? Episode 1 and 2, it's like, it's not that much happens. You're just getting the economy up and running, but... 3, a little bit of an attack. 4, getting your army together, sending it out, taking out raider camps. 5, should be, like, almost ready to challenge the Baron. 6, probably will ch challenge the Baron, I imagine. And uh, maybe it'll be done soon after that, I don't know. Alright, we're up to 101 again. Is this done yet? The farms, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, it basically is. Okay, cool. Take these, reduce these down just to one for now. They can do barley or something. And we'll start the upgrade process. Let's begin. That's four houses done there. And some of these... Do they have upgrades, actually? They need to upgrade some of the ones that don't have chickens and things. I don't know. We'll see when they're done. These ones have goats, goats, nothing and nothing. Yeah, these ones can be upgraded. Oh. That's four logs each. That brings us down to 30. I'm going based on proximity to the market. And we've crashed. Hard crash. Damn. Honk. Damn. That's the first hard crash I've had. I had a crash before, but I didn't actually get any um, error message like that. It, I guess actually the other one was a hard crash. This is more of a soft crash where it actually gives you an error. Maybe too many upgrades? I don't know. Frostpunk is the second one. Yeah, tomorrow Frostpunk 2 has a beta. So you can pre-order the game and play it uh, for seven days. They just have like a beta period where you can play it for seven days, basically. But I got sent it a little early. And uh, I'll have a video out for tomorrow. Autosave. Is that today? Yeah. Let's go with that. Two hands was timed out by stream elements for 30 seconds. Let's see what happened. Uh, it's because he typed quickly. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess the bot it tries to catch people who've typed in all caps. I'm sorry that it does it, but it is just the way it is. Should probably write rules somewhere so people know that. You should be back in 30 seconds, I guess, according to that. It's because we had people in here just spamming, so I just set up the stream elements bot with all the default settings, and that's what it does. Um, yeah, I can't give my opinion on Frostpunk 2, but let's just say I'm... I think the video is going to be good. <laughs> Alright, anyways. Uh, so did we upgrade these yet? Are any of them being upgraded? No. Are we still on the farms? Yes. Have we plowed? We're still sowing. Alright, let me just speed up time. We want the sowing to get done. I don't think there's anything else I really did here. Did we build that other... 
That's still being built. Yep, that's good. Okay, cool. Let's just wait for these guys to get done. Woodcutter's Lodge is done. Let's assign a couple people to that. And now we can take these guys off. Good enough. Alright, let's do some upgrades again. Sorry about that. Alright, that's pretty much it. Down to 14 timber, so we'll leave it at that. We have five families... Ah. Oh. Maybe I'll try upgr upgrading slower, because I've never had that happen when I'm upgrading before. Oh shit, I meant to send it. Oh well. <laughs> it's the same as the first one I sent. Damn! Alright, not looking good. Darn, do you think it's a good idea to let the game cook a bit more before playing, since so much is planned for the future? For this game? Um, th someone actually even asked me that about Frostpunk, and again, I can't give my opinion, but it's very hard to argue against waiting with games in general. Because they always just get better. So, I can't think, I can't really think of a good argument for why would you ever play anything at launch, or even before launch. Like, what's really the reason? Unless you've got nothing else to play, or you're just absolutely not interested in anything else, and you've got disposable income, then I guess go for it. But I kind of think, like, Manor Lords would be better if you wait a year, you know? No doubt. Frost would be better if you wait, you skip the beta and just get it at launch, possibly even after. I guess there's an argument to say, like, you want to support maybe some of the smaller devs earlier on? Or just buy full price or whatever? I don't know. So do I think it's a good idea to let the game cook? I do, actually. Yeah. You'll probably... If you can... If you've got other things to play, you'll probably end up playing something that's better later on. But if you're susceptible to hype, you might not, you know, kind of... Maybe enjoy it as much later on, if you don't have that buzz and excitement anymore. Because you just know it's something you're going to get to eventually. If that matters to you doesn't matter to me. I play all my games. So all it, not being a content creator, my gaming time, I'm two years, two to three years behind everything. I'm playing at the moment Jedi Fall in Order, not Survivor. Fall in Order. And before that, what did I play before that? Can't remember. Oh, I played GTA 5. <laughs> I played the single player of GTA 5. I had, admittedly, I'd played that before. But then before that, I played Ghost of Tsushima. So, you know, I'm always like two or three years behind everything. But that's because the games have, they're cheaper, they're patched, so they, they're just, they run better, they have performance modes if they didn't already, because I'm playing a console. And, uh, and they have just like less bugs, but then they also will have extra content. So Ghost of Tsushima, the DLC was baked in, I played it on the PlayStation Plus Extra tier, so I didn't even buy the game. It was added to the PlayStation Plus Extra tier, it had all the DLC, it was immaculate, it was a PS5 version, it ran perfectly. Such a good experience. And it's like, I heard, li I listened to a podcast after the fact, like a spoiler cast, and the people on it were saying like, oh, it's kind of buggy. And I'm like, not for me, it wasn't, you know, nothing. Because um, they played it at launch. So, I don't know. Even with the studios like Sony Studios, which normally don't really have very buggy games, you're still kind of better off. Right, I'm gonna try just upgrade these four first or something. Just maybe it'll chill a little bit then. That's a normal amount, I would say. That's the amount I've done in the past. That's nothing too crazy. Hopefully it's not something else that's crashing the game coincidentally while I'm doing upgrades. I'll just speed up time and see. Anyway, it's not like this. It's over now we're back. <laughs> It'll always get better. Tell that to Imperator. Yeah, that's one of the rare games where, in my opinion, it didn't. But hey, to some people it did. Like Lambert, YouTuber. Uh, I normally, and some people will tell you now it's better than ever. <laughs> I, um... Is it demanding on PC performance? Playable on a laptop? I don't know. I haven't tried playing it on a laptop. Um, I'm playing it with a pretty beefy PC rig at the moment, and it runs great. But I, I don't know, because I haven't tested on anything else. You can check the minimum spec on Steam. I think the minimum spec, people say, it's actually kind of low. Um, Spartan, hey, how's it going, man? Bitmark is here too, by the way, Spartan. Uh, to wait, infinity, or to enjoy all the moments in time they <laughs> as they come. That's too deep, man. Alright, so we've just had multiple crashes, so we're just loading again. Hopefully we're okay now. We're trying to upgrade these plots. 
first. And then we'll just do another series of upgrades and just continuously be upgrading. We have four families on construction. Take one off the farms again. Anyways, just again, for last time I'll do a recap here. So, last time we played was yesterday on the stream. There are bandits that are on the edge of the map over here, and there are bandits that are here. This group came in with four units, so it was about 74 units in total, I think. Yeah, 74 men came in, and they pretty much decimated us. We fought to the last man. Everyone who held a sword fought, and everyone died. But it was kind of a stalemate. They were left with just 10... Uh, men left and they just retreated off and went over there and just stood there then so I don't know what that's about and then we have these guys that are in at the edge of the map that haven't moved since they came in so again don't know what that's about and they came in before those guys so I'm sure there'll be another wave and they'll be even bigger or whatever but I will go out and deal with them if I can get the force together but unfortunately in this game even though all our bodies are right there for us to collect we don't get any of the weapons back as a result we're just we have no army anymore literally nothing uh, even our men-at-arms were killed, so we've got no defense. So the idea is to just build up some money and then bring in warbows, shields, and sidearms and just start building ourselves up again. But to get a bit more money, but more quickly, now we can actually afford to upgrade, build a tavern. We should actually get that going as well, thinking about it. Uh, and make the people happy. So that they pay some more money, and then we can get a blacksmith and even maybe make some of our own weapons if we get crazy enough. Which we did before here. Uh, what am I looking for? Tavern. There we go. Will it fit in this spot? I would like it to go where that woodcutter's is. Get rid of this. Oh, the, it's going to leave a pile though behind, won't it? Yeah. Uh, where can we put it then? It really would be just perfect there, so... Might see if we can relocate this building or something. Just even temporarily. Hopefully they just move the pile. Most of that wood we've assigned to go into these upgrades, so. So, on normal difficulty, if you upgrade a house, I did look at this because I wasn't sure yesterday. If we have a look at one of these, uh, meeting the church level here is totally fine, but if we were to remove that church level, they'll actually now lose approval. But in normal difficulty, if you don't meet the church level, they're fine. They're like, okay, whatever. They don't get a bonus from approval, but they don't lose approval either. So, approval penalty is just like way harsher on the higher difficulty, I think. It's not just for that, it's for like loads of different things. Anyway, please actually put that as a suggestion in the content creator channel. Have an X percentage of weapons and armor returned from your fallen men. Looting was very common. Nah. I don't really participate in discords and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I'm planning on writing something a bit more detailed and sending it to the creator, so... Maybe he'll take that on board, maybe not. I spoke to him a little bit about behind the scenes and he said he'd be receptive to it, so I'll do, I'll do that. I'm sh See, the thing is... I know for a fact he has like that tester group, his, his own tester group, and I'm sure something like that has been given to him. Anything that's like a historical detail or a realism detail, you can bet your balls people are telling him like to make that a thing. So, I, I would assume. But, uh, you know, I'll write it down anyway and do it in the future. Um, but nothing's going to be changing in the next couple of weeks anyway. I'm sure he has enough on his plate as he gets to release, working on all that Xbox stuff as well. Has anyone actually asked him to give it a review score out of 10? Me? Uh, nobody has, actually. I'm not going to review it. Um, but yeah, my my playtime is at 25 hours, it says at the moment. That's a gameplay thing, too. No, I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, anything that's gameplay that's also, like, a historical detail. Like, you just know, pe the people people are like telling him to do the most ridiculous things because it's, like, a real-world thing. So the idea that, like, you should be able to keep the equipment because the bodies are there, that's, an o that's so obvious. He might not have done it for... There could be loads of reasons for that, because maybe that, uh, maybe the, uh, loot isn't instantiated on the actual person when they die. Like, if you look at it, when you're transporting a body, there's no model of the body. The bodies that are buried don't have an icon. It also just says, in lowercase, a dead body. It just seems like that's not quite done yet. So I think he just hasn't done it yet. I'm sure you'd probably get something. It just seems to stand to reason that you would get something from it. Um, but you know, like I said, you don't want to just assume like he's thought through everything. There will obviously be things he hasn't. And maybe if more people mention something, you can get it done quicker and prioritize it. So I'm not discounting. I'm just saying that 
I'm pl I plan on writing a bigger sort of almost review, like you said, and a, a list of suggestions formatted in a way for game developers, uh, the way they're supposed to actually read these things, rather than just like bullet points or suggestions that are a bit, in my opinion, chaotic and a bit hard to sort into feedback. Um, from what I've seen from the creator Discord and stuff and his other feedback stuff, so yeah. So I'm just, and he, I asked him beforehand, and he said, yeah, do that, and that'll be good, so maybe that'll help. Spartan, thank you very much for becoming a channel member. Appreciate that. Thank you. We got you. Got him, got him back eventually. Uh, do you build your own PCs or buy pre-built? I buy pre-built because I'm a console player at heart. So I, I just like a turnkey solution kind of thing. I don't want to spend time building PCs and having them break and stuff with me. I took a GP... I'm, I'm, I'm not an idiot, but I did <laughs> replace a GPU once and it completely tank killed my PC somehow. Um, and I don't think I did anything wrong because I've done it in other times and it's been fine. So I just don't... I have very bad luck with PCs, so I just don't open them up and do anything with them. Almost ever. Recently, I had to open my PC and change one fan. And that went okay, but I just... I hated it. You know, I hate that kind of stuff. And it took, like, two hours. Because <laughs> it was all cable managed, and I had to, like, tie the little cables together and then cut them open to get the different ones out that I wanted, and then put, try to get them back where they were. Oh, what a nightmare. I hate that stuff. Uh, so that's just me. But you do pay, obviously, a lot more. But at least you get warranty and someone will look after your PC if it breaks, so you don't have to worry about it. Anyways. Where's the satisfactory videos? Oh uh, yeah, they won't be back until sometime late next week. I'm playing this and Frostpunk over the next week. I posted to the uh, Twitter and Discord and I guess I didn't community post it. Maybe I should have done that. But I was letting people know that in those other places that there won't be regular scheduling for about a week. Um, that we'll be playing other games because I got sent them early and I'm really, really excited for them. So I haven't given up on it or anything. It'll be back. In fact, Satisfactory views better than Manor Lords even, but still. Um, but I was just excited to play this. So. Do you lose your own gear, right, when someone dies? Oh yeah, I guess, um, yeah, so the person that goes out there, I guess technically they must have an inventory with the equipment on them. And then when they die... It goes away. It could be done that way, or it could just be when you hit that rally button, it takes from your stockpile and applies it to the number of people in a unit. It could be unit-based rather than individual-based, which is why it doesn't uh, work. Or, you know, maybe. That could be the case. Because, for instance, when the, when the retinue dies, you don't get any of their gear, because you don't pay for their gear, and they're not carrying gear. They're just a unit that comes out of the manor. So, it could be based on... If he made the entity as a unit... And because they're a unit, they don't have individual equipment then anymore. That could be why they're not dropping it. That would be my guess. Otherwise, you could maybe duplicate the weapons, potentially. Obviously, until it's, like, you know, thought through and fixed. I'm just saying, like, what what could be the reasons that he didn't do it immediately? That could be the reason. Um, or maybe it was just a case of the only way that loot gets dropped on the ground at the moment is in a big supply pile. So maybe you just didn't want that. I, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. You have to ask him why it's not in the game, I guess. I'm just speculating. Yeah, these are taking a while. Come on, let's go. So we tried to upgrade... How many... Oh, actually, I don't even need that many families doing this because they upgrade their own houses, thinking about it. More just for the material to be delivered around. I'll we'll put some people back on these things. Yeah, and the table, we'll get two people on that. How's berries going? Berries are growing back nicely, it's May. Let's get another person on forager hut. 58 bodies need to be buried. Yeah, so it's triggered how many there are now. It knows for sure. All right, anyway, I know, right? Feels like a surgeon messing with my PC. Yeah, it's just not for me. Some people love it. I, I do think if I wasn't doing this as a job, I would maybe play around with the idea of at least upgrading my PC to get the feel of that before then potentially building my own one. Um, but just because I do this as a job, I'm like, my time is just, you know, I'll pay someone to do that because, you know, frankly, I'll, I'll make more money working than I will spending that time building the PC. I don't think I'll save as much as I'd earn with the same amount of time. Because I won't be able to build it quickly. It'll take me a long time. <laughs> and I have to read a lot and source parts. They're so all of that considered. It's better just to pay someone to do it for me. Two hands as well. Thank you very much for becoming a channel member. Senator as well. Tier 2 out of his mind. Hi, new here, says Hacko Gaming. 
Uh, the early access on the 26th is not the final version. Well, it depends what you mean by final version. It'll be an early access game on Steam. So, it's an early access game. It's the exact version that you're seeing here that I'm playing. The quote, early access version. I happen to have it early. So I know the language is confusing. But I've been sent it early. But this is the quote, early access version of the game. And the game will receive updates on Steam until it eventually hits 1.0, I guess. And I would imagine the game will be in early access for multiple years. I would imagine. As most early access games usually are. It'd be cool to have weddings at the church, or does that happen already? No, that doesn't happen. It would be cool to have more real-life simulator type things going on. There's no kids in the game, either, you know? It'd be nice to have children. And it'd be vicious to see your town getting raided and what could happen there. But, uh, they could get robbed and stolen and taken away. And you could have so many things. You'd want to have a more realistic, again, brutal, uh, village simulator. <laughs> So there's lots of things, you know, the lists are endless really of what you could, that's what I was saying about like the um, developer, it's like, oh my god, there's so many things you could do and be pulled in so many different directions by everybody with their own ideas. I don't even know what I would do next. It's... Well, I, I kind of do, but I won't go off on random tangents, but yeah, it, it probably wouldn't be a lot of the detail things. I think I'd be doing a lot more of the bigger picture stuff first, right? My whole goal will be getting the other AI in the game, getting them functional where they actually compete for land, having four lords compete over a map, having multiple maps, having lots more content and buildings. Um, those would be the things I would focus on first before doing any of the, I'm going to zoom in and see people getting married and that kind of stuff. That would just be me though. Yeah. Content, scale, and replayability would be my focus rather than detail. Uh, and yeah, just lifelike things, I guess. But I have no idea what he plans on focusing on next. Oh, nice. That's a good amount of money. 43 gold. That's pretty good. I mean, selling all that firewood. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is... I like the sound of that. Let's get more in. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on... Close that unit down. Keeping an eye on this number. We need to bring this back up if we want to field any sort of defenses. We also need to start taxing people soon, but we're going to be losing approval while these houses are now level two. So they need a stone church and two types of clothing. At least we've already met some of the requirements, but we're gonna need straight away, this needs to be upgraded to a cobbler. You can start making some shoesies. Shoes will fulfill that other type of um, clothing requirement that they have. We need to upgrade the church, but that's gonna require clay tiles. So we'll have to go actually start getting some clay. So let's focus on that. We have the workforce for it. Is this the right mining pit? Yeah, go there. Uh, then we'll also need to refine that in a furnace. And there's a storehouse not too far away, so I won't even bother with that. Those two buildings should be fine. Alright, good. The oxen are carrying the logs down to where they need to go. Nice. Andrew Wilkins. Again, hey, appreciate all the channel members. Really, do. I'm sorry that they don't pop up on stream. I don't know how to fix it. I'm going to have to just... I'm using stream elements and gifted memberships, super chats, and subscribers will all pop up on the stream, but regular channel memberships just won't work anymore, and I don't, I don't know why. It's like, um, there's like a little activity feed that you see on my other screen here, and it'll like, like pop up telling me like people who've subscribed or done anything like that, like donated or whatever, and it pops up for everything, but it just isn't listing channel members. Like, so it's like stream elements just can't see it for some reason. But when someone gifts them, it, it does pop up. And I'm like, oh, that works. So Stream Elements is the program that then links to like the little notifications that appear on stream. Just that I would mention, I see you in chat. I appreciate it, but unfortunately, there's no little jingles and some high dopamine rush on the, on the stream there for you. <laughs> uh, not meant as a slight, but now that you're producing content that I'm interested in, then I feel like I can subscribe for a while. <laughs> well, it might just be for this week, to be honest. We'll see. It's interesting, behind the scenes, a few creators reached out to me and said, like, their Manor Lords content hasn't viewed very well. Like, there's all these channels that have hundreds of thousands of views. This channel's like, um, I think it's Nivarius, Resonant, Raptor. These guys, and I'm assuming a few others, in the weeks leading up to the Manor Lords uh, content creator stuff, they re-uploaded their old videos of Manor Lords to sort of prep the algorithm 
and they were getting hundreds of thousands of views. And some of the channels the same size as mine, you know. It's obviously like a lot of people search this game and are always looking for new stuff with it. Uh, I'm not throwing shade at them, you know. If they want to game the system or play the algorithm, do what you got to do, I guess. But um, it's interesting to see that then when they went live with their videos, those ones did do really well, from what I could tell. Um, I'm not one to really look at other creators almost ever, but it's because two creators reached out to me and said like, actually three, uh, two people reached out to me and said like, oh, like. My views are, like, really low. I thought we were getting way more. And I, I remember talking to Jackie beforehand saying, like, he knew that Frostpunk was coming as well. He's like, oh, it's going to be a good week for you. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. You know, it's just, it's totally random. You could get 100,000 views, you could get 10,000 views, you could get one. You, you just don't know. Because everyone's going live at the same time with all the same content. So how, how can you predict it? Yeah, how did I get onto that tangent? Oh, yeah. Based on the viewership and everything is, like, what would make me decide whether I continue or not, so... That's why I might, who knows, only do it for a week or so. Or until there's no more content. I like the game, so I'd like to keep playing it. Uh, and it's much quicker <laughs> to make than satisfactory. There's not really any planning to do other than just learning little bits of the game. I can sort of just record it and go. And I do my editing and stuff to try to make it as good as I can, but it's not like I'm going to sit there planning the production lines of a town and then just like recreate it in a video. That's what I do in satisfactory. So it would be... If this viewed well, this would be great, because it's, uh, frankly, a lot easier <laughs> to make content for. Same with Frostmonk, actually. Alright, we can put a family on that. And did I put too many families back on this? Let's just bring it back down to one now, while it is the... Uh, summer, when we should just be growing. Had another one on trade, did we? Yeah, I could probably get rid of that. So we're, we're getting some equipment coming in. One sidearm, five small shields. So now we can make five, uh, a small little archer unit if we wanted to. Or five men. And now they're just going to be looking to purchase nine sidearms and nine small shields. As our approval. It's just barely hanging on with the unburied bodies. And also we have to build that tavern. Need to clear this area first. The logs are almost gone. They should just bring them over here, actually, the oxen. I think we'll do that. Hey, where's the brothel? Am I right? Uh, have you ever played Kenshi? Kind of feel like you would like it. I think I played that way back in, like, 2012. Like, a super, super long time ago. I feel like I played it all the way back then. Is that the same game? Because I've seen it also being advertised, and it's like... Maybe it came to Steam later or something. I don't know. But, yeah, I played it a long time ago. But it's a bit, I don't know, a bit too old for me now. Not to be that guy, but as a, as a small YouTuber, I still consider myself small. View-wise, I don't get that many views. So, regarding that, I kind of have to lean on new games or newer stuff. Or new updates, big new updates and things to get... Ride a little bit of a marketing wave. Rather than just be like, oh, I'm just going to play some game I love from 10 years ago, you know? Because it just, it just frankly wouldn't do as well. Frank, you know. 2013, yeah? Yeah. I think I played it then when it was super early. Because, yeah, I was in college 2013. That's when I remember playing it. I graduated 2013, actually, yeah. Was it out even before then? I feel like I played it in, like, 2011 or 12. But I could be wrong on that. How many planks do we have? Yeah, loads. Alright, are we mining some clay? We are indeed. Do we have stones? We do. Good. All right. Everything's fine. I'm just <laughs> worried about the attacks out there. I'll just keep speeding up. So these guys will still keep upgrading if we provide them. I won't do that one yet. Do these ones. Another four. It didn't crash that time when we only did four. It crashed when I upgraded eight. Let's try four at a time. Hey, appreciate the channel membership as well. FPG Shiba. 1.0 came out in 2018. Ah. I was in development 16 years, yeah? Mm. Yeah. So, I, I guess, ultimately, though, long story short, it's so long ago that I know I've played it, but I remember very little about it. Other than it being, like, a very barren... Interesting, but barren, like, a very empty game. You're, like, running around, like, big empty wasteland-type areas, almost. YouTube is your full-time job, I'm guessing. Yeah, I've been full-time since 2017. Quit, quit my job at Creative Assembly in 2017, September. No, August. August 28th, September. Yeah, August 28th, 2017. Since then, 
been sticking it to the man, you know? <laughs> and instead I work for Google now, basically. Yeah, that's Kenshi. Yeah, so that's all I can really remember though. I couldn't even tell you what you do in it other than a little bit of combat. I just remember it had like a kind of a revolutionary combat system back then. And then there's this other game where you could, you could, it might have even been the same one, or I'm just getting confused. You could play as like a rabbit, like it looked like a humanoid rabbit that would fight. And I've seen that in other things now, there's like a fighting game, specifically where in your little arena, and there's these like amazing animations of this like rabbit fighting someone else. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, level two plots, they're coming in hot. That's going to be getting us that little bit of regional. And we're... Oh, ooh, negative one. What are we missing? Negative one shoes. Wow. And how's our leather situation? We have 20 leathers. So the cobblers has been done. So you'd imagine that out the back, right? That's where they're going to be making the shoes. Now, something I don't know yet in the game is you can build a an expanded living space, right? So this will turn into a second house. I, I don't know if that's a second family or if it's considered one family and more hands to work on the cobbler. Are you sure? Like, I've done it before, so I've seen it. But I haven't really observed it to know, like, do you get more shoes that way? Or is it just another family that happens to live in the same place that can be assigned elsewhere? Because if that's the case, then you'd almost want every plot to be a double plot, because you could just really squeeze them in. Uh, close to the market and stuff. Only 16 bodies left to go, so that's good. We're still gaining people. Oh, no, we're not, because there's actually no new houses. I have to build some new ones. But I'm still waiting on some other building projects. This is finally done. Let's put a family on that. That requires refueling. Got loads of firewood. Uh, yeah, let's go with some extra houses then. I thought one could look kind of cool out here. People want me to do more organic houses. This would be a very small plot, but in at the back. Ooh, oh my god, you can actually fit a little workshop in there. We took it in right at the back of the farm, or do we took it on the side here? What do you think? So, roadside, farm side. Let me know. I think on YouTube, especially at 1440p, chat delay is kind of long, so apologies if it takes me a second to see it. I'm sure it has it up and down, it's like any other job, but I'm jealous. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah. It, I'm on, I would say I'm riding an up wave. For the last year and a half. The first three years was a, da a serious spiral. Managed to stick with it though and clawed it back. But anyway. It, it, it has had great moments though overall. But it's super nice working for yourself. In a lot of ways. But very stressful in other ways. Anyway. How do you like the UI in this game? I'm quite mixed on it. In some aspects it's, it's quite good. I think just like every part of the game really. It's just not quite done yet. The style, though, I'm actually pretty fine with, yeah. Style-wise. Um, I did think the kind of dotted lines and stuff is a bit strange. With the clashes with the kind of parchment effect and the kind of old-style buttons and stuff you have. It's like a weird mix of modern and old. But maybe that's just kind of what you need. But um, it's funny you mention that because, you know, one of the things I said to, to the dev, Greg, was about, it was more specifically about UI. And I said I would give him some mock-ups and see what he thinks. And he was very nice, and he was like, yeah, I'd be receptive to that, so. Shout out. Um, so Gizmo Pwn says, farm side, farm side, farm side, farm side. Okay, most people say farm side. Wasn't just Gizmo Pwn. Ooh, it looks like this road has to go this way, though. Okay, that's fine. Alright, what do we have to? 33, that's our extra house, just to fit some more people in. We can see which ones are level 2, just by the tiny little 2 on the left side of these things. Like, this would be a screen that I would want to be massively improved, you know? It's quite, quite hard to read, I'd say. And then this one is actually low-key, like, really good. But you have to select the market to even see it. I feel like this should just be, like, part of some overlays that you can check whenever you want. Similar to how when you go into construction, you can do overlays. So, you know, most of the way there. Is it playable without Wi-Fi? Well, you have to download the game, but you don't need to be online to play it. We're now negative two for shoes. Okay, no negative one. We've brought in three sidearms. We're waiting on more money. So are these all built now? Level two? Three of them aren't yet. So the upgrades take damn long time because you have to wait for the people to actually do it themselves. 
who live there. It's not the construction workers that do it, as far as I know. Are we making clay tiles, though? Roof tiles, I should say. Converts clay into clay tiles. Yep. There's a family doing it. They have clay in there. Just a matter of going up and down to the storage, I think, which is a, is a little bit far. Yeah, they're storing clay all the way up there. Okay, I could give you a storehouse down here as well. Lads. And then we'll disconnect this or tell this one not to store any clay. Hopefully they'll just put it where they need it. All right, speed of time. So just for those who are joining me, we're playing on the hardest difficulty. We got attacked by bandits and it was a massive setback. They killed something like 50 men of ours. Um, and they managed to... They basically won, but they didn't attack the town. So the town was saved thanks to the sacrifices of the people. Um, but it was a... What's the word? A, a pyrrhic victory, I guess you could say, right? We, we beat the bandits away. But they're kind of just over there now, and there's another group over there, and there's going to be another wave coming in, and we've got no weapons to, to give our boys to recruit more units. So the rush at the moment is to make as much money as possible to trade for weapons, and also to start upgrading the town um, so that we can actually bring our own money in, not just rely on trading for, for money, and possibly even make our own weapons. That's a bit harder. We don't have any iron left. We used it all early on. So we'd have to just import the iron, and then with a bloomery and a blacksmith, we could then do that we sort that out and make it ourselves at the moment we have the cobbler's shop for the shoes we could make our own bows out of wood actually with a bowyer's shop that would be good i think that'd be worthwhile let's do that enables production of war bows junior jackson man shout out for the super chat boom it actually appeared there you go a fat 50 stack thank you i really do appreciate it that's incredibly generous I've been a fan for some time, he says. Appreciate all the work you put into the series I enjoy watching. Definitely makes my nights better. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Are the system requirements high for this game? You'd have to check them on Steam. I, I've been told they're relatively low. I think you need something like a 1070 for a GPU, but don't quote me. The system requirements are on Steam, and they're the official requirements, so you best just look at that. This is part of the YouTube series or a different save game. This is a different save game. We're playing on hard and a different scenario. There's no AI Baron. Instead, waves of bandits come in. Uh, and we've been kind of growing and changing the town based on user, um, user feedback, community feedback, you know, as well. But yeah, this is a separate run. So we've got some roof tiles. What did we need that for? Oh yeah, the church upgrade. That's what. Ooh, wild animals migrated. They moved a little bit. Not very far. Man, these trees are lush in here. Super thick. Can't even see our buildings in there. There's a couple buildings on the edges there. A 1060. Wow. 4090 time, baby. Yeah, so I've got a 3090. And as far as I can tell, the game's running a locked 60. Totally fine. And I think I've turned off the upscaling. Yeah, I've locked it to 60. But I have turned... I don't use DLSS or S FSR. And it runs great for me. Now, I haven't you know, thrown the game up to maybe 500 population. I don't know how well it scales yet. This is as big as I've ever made a town, actually, 108. Or really, 36 households. So we'll keep growing and everything, but at the moment, I just need to get more and more weapons in. There's no, we don't even need more people, really. We just need more weapons. Although I guess there's never any harm in having more people if you can feed them, and it seems like we can. We've got 500 berries. And a lot of the money I'd like to spend on different plots for different types of food, but we just need it for weapons. It's really hamstringing us in that regard. I feel really hamstrung. All right, that's cooking in the background. Oh, sorry, game paused. Um, yeah, we still need 10 of these, so we already have five. So we're halfway there to get the upgrade. Once this is done, that'll be a nice big approval bump because they'll get this church level met. We want to build the tavern and a brewer, right? Those are the next two things. So, you could be... The tavern's there. Damn, I wish I made this guy the brewer. Can we switch it? That's interesting. You can't switch it. Huh. Apparently not. You can switch it when you get animals, right? You just select it again. Demolish or whatever. This is the Fletcher. Yeah, wow. You're locked in. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's not a big deal, but let's make this one the brewer. So, produces ale from malt. And we've been making malt. We have 38 of it. Thanks to our barley farm, which is fallow this year. Hopefully allowing us to 
increase the fertility ever so slightly. So we get 32% on barley that year. Do that. It's about time for a new PC for me. You have homelessness going on. Please build more living space. Uh, no we don't. Unless I missed it. We have 30... Oh, you're right. We have 36 families and... Oh, that's because the houses are being upgraded. Yeah, I think. We do have another house being told to be built there. And, uh, are the bodies gone? If the bodies are all gone, we can maybe start taking people off the church again. They seem like they're kind of done. That gives us some more hands on deck to build those houses. Yeah, I'm just going crazy for firewood at the moment because we're selling it for money. And at least food is really good as well. We can maybe take some people off. No, they see the berries are growing so fast that it's good to have, um, not there, but here. Multiple families on that. Maybe chill on the animals for a bit. I want to make sure one farmer is on the plot at the moment. I guess we don't even need that person. Is, are they even doing anything? Nah. Skiving. Skiving off. Two on the trader. Yeah, everything else is fine. We just put a lot more people down this way, didn't we? A couple families down here. Well, that's five now, just working on construction at least. And we now are up to 16 weapons, so seven sidearms and one small shield. Warbos is climbing. Oh, Warbos is climbing, of course, because we are trading for them. Or not trading for them, we're making our own now. That's great. We could actually start exporting Warbos if we wanted to make some money. How much would we get? Five. So we'd get basically 50. And then we could bring in some small shields. We could also make our own small shields. We don't need to do that anymore either. Just the... Because that's only wood. So let's just say no trade on those two. We'll just bring in the weapons now. And we'll get a joinery or whatever they're called. A joiner's workshop to get the shields made. Yeah. Make wooden parts and shields. Cool. So brewery, fletcher, cobbler. And then we also need the tavern. I wanted to put somewhere out here. I guess we just angle it. Why not? All right, tavern can go there. Kind of aiming into the town. Just a little bit. Church across from it. A little bit of storage. People's homes. All right. Feeling good. Positive outlook. Once this gets upgraded to be a joiner's workshop, then we can uh, assign it to make the small shields. So all we need to worry about is bringing in weapons then. That'll save a lot of... We should be able to grow a bit quicker then because of that. Not grow, but like get our weapons made a bit quicker. So it requires one plank. We have 213. We're going to be making shields for days. Wait until you see. And then the tavern. The church can be upgraded now as well. So let's go. Brewery just automatically makes ale. So that's fine. They don't have to be assigned either. The Fletcher, they can only make bows. You don't have to make arrows in the game. Just bows. And then the cobbler makes shoes. So that's all well and good. Just a matter of upgrading even more homes. All right, we're getting the snowball is gathering momentum. Just whether or not we can outpace the AI that's going to be coming our way. What I'm going to do now as well, actually, is just yeah. Where's the other logging camp? It's over here, isn't it? Get people off that for a moment. We have tons of timber. We're fine. I'd like to do a bit of reforesting, actually. Now we'll just put place that there. People are joining all the time. So we have 36 living space, and we have thir sorry 37, and we have 37 families. So yeah, if we want to grow at all, we need more houses. But I've kind of focused my construction efforts on uh, upgrades at the moment. Cool. Anyways. It looks so real. Church is being upgraded. All the dead bodies, all the fallen. And it does look really, really nice. So you just get rid of the UI and just like look out into the vistas and stuff. When the weather's good, especially. I mean, it looks great when the weather's bad, but when it's a clear day, it looks even nicer. Hey, Vince. Are the mounted knights in this game or just not yet? No, I don't think so. There are in the trailer, but not in this, as far as I know. Berries. 
No cavalry. Get your berries, fucking plump and juicy. Nice big field of flax as well. What year is it? Or here? What month is it? July. So I don't have to harvest anytime soon. So current projects: church has been upgraded, tavern's been built. That should meet the demand that we have in some of these houses that they're a little upset by. It would be borderline getting tier three if we were ready for it. And we should be banging out weapons now like nobody's business. 17 war bows. So we want to make 36 of them and then we can maybe pause war bows for a bit. Now, do war bows come from planks? They do. Good. And it seems like small shields come from one plank. Large shields, you need two. Well, we just need small shields for now. And uh, yeah, let's set the trading posts imports for sidearms to just be a bit higher, right? We want to bring in quite a lot. We have 70 regional wealth, so get spending. Where's this guy? He's on his way in right now, actually. Hmm, pressing spacebar is locked to that button for some reason. There we go. <laughs> There's a horse right there. He's basically cavalry, right? It's basically a chariot. Look how angry he is. Holy shit. I guess we can't see anything in there, but he should be bringing weapons with him or something, I guess. Because the merchants are different. Apparently, you can actually trade without setting up the trade route. Your people will go to the edge of the map to do the trades. But when you pay for a trade route, you're paying for a traveling merchant to come by on the regular. Kind of interesting. I just only found that out recently. I haven't tested it. People just told me. Look at that. Look at the swagger he's got. The swagger of a medieval 30-something-year-old. He's selling at a loss, that's why. That's funny. Can you purchase equipment and materials from a merchant who occasionally rolls into town? Yep, <laughs> basically. So at the trading post, you go to the... Oh, no. I thought it crashed again, but I'm okay. At the trading post... Alright, there's two types of traders. The livestock and the regular. If we go to the regular one, go to trade. There's all the different categories of things you can get. In order to set up a dedicated route, you pay a certain amount. You can change that amount based on some upgrades in here. So we have the trade logistics, so it locks it to 25, so it makes it a lot cheaper. That is, by the way, per region, this development tree. It's not a tech tree overall. It's just per region. So you can specialize the region for trade if you want. Anyway, so you select this, right? So that's like, okay, we're paying for a trade route. A traveling merchant will regularly visit the region to trade this specific type of thing. We've done that for sidearms. I've done it for war bows and small shields, but I've told them not to trade at the moment. Uh, and the left number is the export. The right number is the import. And you can democratize excuse me, that as well by getting the better deal. So it'll actually just be the one price for all, and it'll be the lower price, which is nice. Uh, Tatmo, thanks very much for the channel membership. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Still waiting for that Lord of the Rings 2 stream? What did I miss regarding that? That <laughs> trailer scam, like with CA's art artillery on the walls. It's so funny because I know I sat across from the guy who put the artillery on the walls, knew him well. And he was like, yeah, but it's a cool trailer. No one at CA told him to do that. It was a one cinematic artist. He just thought it'd be cool. He didn't give a fuck if it was in the game or not. <laughs> he was like, oh, we have cannon models. We have walls. You can't see what I'm doing, but putting my hands together, you know? Like, bring them together. It seems they borrowed a few concepts from Lord of the Rings 2 that I haven't seen in any other grand strategy game since. What is Lord of the Rings 2? I've never heard of that. Are you talking about like Battle for Middle Earth or something? He doesn't know. Yeah, I don't know. L O T R. It's got to be Lord of the Rings, right? Uh. Yeah, I don't know what else that would be. L O T R. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> All right, how are we doing with our upgrades? Church. It's on, on pro in, under progress. For five families who are supposed to be building, it's taking a damn long time. The resources are there. Where are the people? How often in real life do you guys see building sites with nobody on them? Because I see it every fucking day.
I'd kind of like if you had a... See, I'm never really a fan of the... A lot of games do this, these types of games, where it's like, okay, the people who are unassigned will be the people who move stuff around, or the people who are unassigned will be the people who construct. I'd rather just have, like, a building that you assign builders to, personally. That's just me. I don't like the idea of, like, okay, they'll just figure it out themselves. And they... I mean, there's never a problem with it, but the difference is... Every other building where someone's working, I can track where they are. So here, for instance, I can go, okay, where are they? I can see what they're doing. Not that I really, I can't change what they're doing, I suppose, but I like to know. But for the builders, I'm like, well, there's no way of seeing where they are. You know, maybe if I hovered over this, it should do what this does. Just draw arrows out and show me or highlight them or something. It'd just be nice to know. Is there a problem? Are they waiting on something? We have materials. The sites are good. Certain houses don't have their requirements met, but that shouldn't be the cause for people not working. <laughs> By the way, we've got enough tiles now. I think we can stop that. And that. Are there any of these left to be upgraded? But some of these houses are still being upgraded, but they should be being built by the people who live there. As far as I understand. How many weapons are we up to now? 24 war bows, 12 small shields. Man, it's so much faster now that we're making them ourselves. There we go, that's what we like to see. Where were you? All this time. The people are thirsty. We have nine barrels of ale right now. And 15 shoes. I'm working on a rubber and plastic factory. That's what my next vi fa satisfactory video will be. Rubber, plastic, and steel, all in one. Got enough oxen? Yeah, the materials were delivered. It said 5 out of 5. I should have pointed that out. Things were there. Actually, for the church it wasn't, so maybe that was a bit of a bottleneck. We were still waiting on one roof tile and two timber. Um, my, one of my oxen was bugged, but we do have two at the moment. We have people guiding them as well. Gathering? You're gathering... The hell are you? Oh, they're helping the um, logging camp. Yeah. That's, well, I'm, oh, it doesn't really matter. I'm glad just to see progress. There was no progress before, so it's okay. Um, we could get another ox, though, given a bit more money. We had three. One of them bugged on me, so we, we just let him go. <laughs> and he had a hitching post, and it, it just said... It didn't even say he was an ox anymore. It said he was an ID 17 or something. <laughs> All right, let's get someone in the tavern. Meet the tavern supply, although they'll probably drink all the ale um, by the time we get around to getting this crops uh, planted again next year. So just for re-familiarizing ourselves, joiners, so they make the shields, brewery, they make the ale, fletcher, the bows, cobbler, the shoes. Everyone else is basically either level 1 or if they're level 2 they're just normal standard level 2 plots. Uh, so we need to keep approval up, over 50%, so we just have to meet the multiple demands that they have, obviously. But we're good now to continue our upgrades down this street. We want to do these upgrades as well. There will be a harvest in another month or so of uh, vegetables, at least a little bit, so that'll be good. Uh, no sign of another attack anytime soon. Why did we just get... Oh, we just got influence for completing the church. So that's another, hopefully, uh, requirement met. Church level 2. Nice looking building. That's kind of cool. You can see the water running down the tiles. And they still have the same bodies stored there, of course. <laughs> he had enough, you were feral. Uh, from what, from your what's play, you had wondered what horses do. Have you figured that out yet? Um, and let's play. No. <laughs> I haven't actually bought one to try and test them out. People assume it's to do with the trader, and I would I assume that too, but I haven't actually put the money down because we need it. So... I'm trying to speed up time though so we can get our army actually up and running. 36 war bows is what we need and then we can chill on the planks for a bit. Although we could have two archer units thinking about it. How many people do we have? Because you could go, okay, one archer unit, another, and another. So that would be 108 people would be needed. So at the moment we can field two full units if we get the right equipment. Right now we can do 34 out of 36 based on the shields that we have. Or sorry, the uh, bows. We don't have any money to give for the retinue yet, though. But if approval goes high enough, we can start taxing people. It just, it'll hurt approval. It'll be ne negative 17 just to get 10%. Jesus. 
Yeah, not ready for that yet. That's why we're trying to fill these demands and keep them there. Firewood's good. Weapons still coming in. It says 10 sidearms, 20 small shields. So we're still waiting on more. We said 20, right? Ultimately, I could just put this to 36, knowing that that is a full unit. And we need 36 small shields. Then we can make 36 large shields if you want to make spears. Alright, I'd like to know. So what is, what's being constructed? So these houses are still under construction. Plot level 2. And we're basically in snowball mode now. Every plot that we upgrade, we get more money. Every time we get more money, we spend it on more weapons. Uh, to kind of defend ourselves. We're also just in the background meeting the demands of these houses so that the approval stays high. But yeah, it looks like we drank all the ale pretty much immediately. Although there is 21 malt, so... Maybe they're just not that fast with it yet. Going for a drink. So the people... Kuntz here, who's a brewer. Two of them are crafting, to be fair, but he's going to get high on his own supply. Oh my god. What a disaster of a game. We leave some negative reviews, please, until Greg pulls his thumb out of his ass. Did he not test it? How many joking, of course. <laughs> That's funny. That might be the first time I've seen animations just completely offset from where they're supposed to be. Although, impressive calf strength, I must say. Anyway, they have their drinks. Single malt. <laughs> That's funny. I'm not a beer drinker myself. Although I did drink whiskey, I should know better. Uh, what month is harvesting time for the farm? So it says uh, between September and November is harvesting, plowing, and sowing crops. So basically next month, we'll take some people. That we'll, the, we have six people building right now, six families. We'll assign five of them to the farms and get the harvests going. We'll also be getting in flax for the first time. The yield is only 16, which is so tragic. We're only going to get 25 grain. Or wheat. You do need massive fields, basically. Like, we'll probably need 100 just to bake enough bread for people in this town. Just to last, like, the year. But getting 25 is nothing. It's, like, almost a waste. Even cooking it. Because it's like, oh, you supply yourself for, like, a couple of months. Big deal. What are they growing? They have their little carrots at the back as well. They'll be harvesting those soon. Cabbages. Or as they say in Ireland, kaboshta. That's the uh, Oskalga version of what a cabbage is. Thank you, Miss Gilday, for teaching me that when I was in primary school. I drink a lot of beer in the summer just for refreshment, of course. Of course. Hi, <laughs> Darren. Nice to see you so excited about the game again. It's funny you say that. I got a comment today just before I read the rest of it saying like, Oh, you've lost the magic since your Anno 1800 episodes. You seem to have lost some sort of spark. Are you enjoying these games? I was like, oh, that, that one kind of got to me a little bit. I'm actually really lo- and it was specifically on the Manor Lords video. I'm like, yeah, this is me being excited. <laughs> Truly. If you want to see- I was- I, mean, I can't really talk about it, but I've been playing Frostbunk 2. The video comes out tomorrow. I want to talk about being excited- exci holy shit. Holy shit. But anyway, we'll talk about that tomorrow, I guess. I wonder- maybe I'll stream that, actually. I wonder how this game will work when you invade other territories. Do you build villages in there, too? Yes. So, in order to- I've done that in my series, actually. So you can click another area, claim with influence, right? You build up influence by winning battles against bandits, uh, by upgrading your church, by- You can also gain influence. So there's two ways of taxing people. Well, there's actually multiple ways of taxing people, but at your manor, open up your taxes, you do a land tax, and that collects- from the regional wealth. So regional wealth is the money that's in everyone's pockets, everyone's household money. It's the community's money. Think of it that way. You're the one who ultimately decides how to spend it, but you don't use it for your own personal gain. You can't build armies with it, you know, things like that. You can't use it for diplomacy or mercenaries, nothing like that. It's instead the community's money that always goes back into the community in some shape or form and is used for trades as well. You want, you want the people to be wealthy so that you've got a good economy going um, like that. Anyways, you, you take a little bit... Whoops. Goddamn. You skim a little bit off the top with your taxes, and that's how you get some money into your treasury. That's one way of doing it. The other way is um, of getting influence is through, through the tithe. So you're taking a portion of the excess food and generating influence with it. 
So I've got loads of influence, I don't need to do that, so I'm happy leaving it off. Um, but then you're allowed to claim a territory, and it'll take a little bit of time, a little loading bar goes up as it's being claimed. And in the other game mode, where there's the AI Baron on the map, he can contest that claim and fight you on the battlefield. Um, and the fight will take place in the region that you're claiming for. So it'll say, like, you've got two months to get to the region that you're supposed to be fighting for. Um, there's no other Baron in this mode, because we're playing the technically more difficult mode, which is where it's just an endless waves of bandits that get harder and harder over time. So this is the challenge mode, I guess. My Let's Play series is with the Baron. Um, so for people who want to know the drawbacks with the Baron, there's no AI building on the map. He'll claim territories, but he won't technically, like, build anything. So he's not like an, an AI, like a player the way you are. He it even references that he has his, you know, towns off map and he's laying claim to it and he'll send his armies in to defend or whatever, you know, just scripted armies, I guess, set amounts that you have to kind of beat back. But that's where you're at in the game right now. So, or where the development's at. Ultimately, the game is supposed to have, you know, AI lords that are competing over a map just like you. So hopefully, fingers crossed that that update isn't one that's going to take years away. I'm hoping it's only, it's the next, almost like the next thing. Because that would really be, if I was the developer, that would be one of my biggest focuses. Because that's replayability. Um, you don't have replayability if you don't have some sort of dynamic AI. But AI is, in, like, really difficult to make. And have it be engaging and not just some scripted thing that you just abuse over and over again. So, I'm not saying it's easy, but that would be what I would be focusing on big time for, for me. Anyway, how many hours does the campaign take to complete? I don't know. I actually don't know. It depends how familiar you are with the game, but I reckon you could probably beat a map in like... If you were good at the game, you could probably beat a map in like 10 hours. Um, but I imagine your first time playing, if you're not really like that optimal, it could be like 30. You know? But it kind of depends. And there's also a sandbox mode where you can just build with no enemies and just try to occupy every region. You can like then um, link them together and send goods between them and stuff and just see how big you can push the population, I guess. Like, how long would it take you to build a thousand houses? I have no idea. That could take a very long time. But to actually win the scenarios, all you have to do is occupy every territory. And I would imagine that's around the 20-ish hour mark on the average, maybe. Maybe if you're really good, you could push it and do it in 10. Especially triple speeding and everything. Uh, anyways, right, just trying to think what else we need. So that tavern supply is kind of coming and going rather annoyingly. It's because we are not making it. The brewery is a bit too slow with making the malt. Actually, there's seven ale in there. What's taking so long? All right, stay in there then. I'm sure they'll be fine. Right, are these guys upgraded? Is anyone building anymore? It's August now. Still not September though. We have to just wait a little bit. Let's try upgrade a couple more houses then. Seems to be a bug in the game if we upgrade too many at once. The game crashes, so that's why I've been taking my time with it. So these are all level 2. Level 2. Couple level 2 here. We could get these ones to be level 2 as well. Requirements not met. We have the stuff we need, but they do not have something. They didn't have the food variety they need, actually. Okay, so we might have to wait before we can do any more upgrades. We only have berries, basically, to feed people. Uh, but, you know, we're waiting. The harvest is coming in soon for these vegetable patches, and... We could start hunting wild animals again. Let's do that. So it looks like the berries are pretty much gone now. Let's get hunting a little bit. I'll give us some of the wild animals. And uh, yeah, we can might as well put people on the farmhouse, get ready for the inevitable harvest. So that's a lot of families that can roll out. Basically tomorrow morning. <laughs> Checking a few of my buildings, just seeing what I've got people on and what I don't, just to remember. Still have a lot of timber and stuff in reserve, so I wouldn't worry too much. We're not growing anymore, though, because we don't actually have any new houses, so I'll tell just one person to start building. Just trying to think, we want to have more interesting, organic-looking houses. Maybe we'll just pop one... ...like here, and maybe rotate it around. That'll be two houses inside by side. Sure, why not? That could be one with another one. No, but yeah, it's facing the wrong way. We'll do it this way. That'll be one with a side plot. Kind of leaning towards the side plot more than just two shoved in like that. Let's try the side plot one. 
There's still room for two houses, technically, but not for a while until we upgrade them. Right next to the tavern, maybe the innkeeper could live there. Those are not his armies, those are mercenaries. For the Baron? Yeah, technically the Baron hires mercenaries. But, like, I guess he doesn't have a town, so... How can he not have it? How can he have his own, you know? Um... Roughly how many hours... Oh yeah, I read that already. I know very little about Matter Lords, but I love Farthest Frontier. How did they stack up against one another? Uh, I haven't played Farth Farthest Frontier since it first came out. I did a 20-part Let's Play on it. Loved it. Really liked it. It was basically Banished 2.0, which was cool. This game it doesn't have as much content as Farthest Frontier, but obviously graphically it's like superior. Its battles are superior as well. Um, but our battles are going to be relatively low, uh, small scale for now. I just realized, actually, we made way too many bows. <laughs> Could sell some, actually. We have enough small shields now, so I'm just going to really quickly tell these guys, you don't need to make any small shields. I don't actually know what you need wooden parts for. Find that out later. Could start making large shields. They take two planks each. And then for the bows, I guess we might as well make as many so we can have two full units. So that would be... 74 bows, so you can still keep working on bows for a little while. If we don't use them, we sell them, so not a big deal. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so the battle side of things and certain elements of this game might be better, but I would say the Farthest Frontier has a, you know, it's a head start. So Farthest Frontier is probably a better game for now in terms of gameplay and balance and the amount of content, the amount of buildings and stuff like that in it. Especially now. But this, pro you know, Probably this game will surpass it eventually. I do already have a malt house, yeah. So um, the malt house. So basically, we have a field down here that did our barley. Next down to it, we have a malt house. In fact, we shouldn't have anyone on that anymore. Uh, so they made all the malt already. So we have in this little tooltip twelve malt still in reserve. We had about thirty initially. Uh, then we just recently built a brewery. So the brewery in the demo from a year ago, you used to be able to build a building that was called a brewery. But now you build it as part of a house. So you build it at, a, at the back plot for the workshop. So it's in there now. When you hover over this house, it says brewery. So they are the ones making... They take in malt and they make ale at, kind of at their own pace. And then they supply the tavern. All right, so there it is there. Ale. So it is working. It's just, they're a bit slow to do it, I guess. Slower than other things. Like, for instance, making bows. Look, we've made three or four times as many uh, bows in that time, and shields, just by taking in the planks and refining them. They seem to get through them way quicker than it takes the brewery. Don't know why that would be. Now, these houses, once you convert them into dedicated job spaces like this, this family can no longer be assigned to anything else. They're no longer a dynamic family. family. They're now c considered artisans that will just work their specific trade. So that's kind of how that works. So we're losing access to some families the more of these kind of upgraded houses we have. Uh, or specialized houses. shouldn't say upgrade, because we can still upgrade. Anyway, they, they were uh, harvesting the fields now. We have many families out there doing that. In fact, we could put even another one on it right now just to really get the job done. So there they all are there. We have a high priority on the on the wheat field. So what we'll do is once we bring all that in, it'll go into our um, windmill. Well, actually, it goes into the farmhouse first where it gets threshed into grain, then into the wind, windmill to get ground into flour and then into the oven, which has very sillily had people on it. That was a mistake of mine. To be made into bread. That was a huge waste. They've been on that for like a year doing nothing. <laughs> our pole arm's worth it. I've never got them. Yeah, I've never gone much further than where I am right now, basically. I've created units for spearmen and archers, but I've never, and for regular um, sword infantry or whatever, but I've never made the higher tier infantry. So, I haven't gotten that far yet. If you choose to expand housing on a plot, do things like ale get produced faster? That's That was a question I asked earlier. I actually don't know. I don't know. It all depends if I expand this household, which you could do. Should we just do it? That's the cobbler. I'd like to do it for the ones that were slow, actually, the brewery, right? So we'll expand their one. So, a second house is going to be built here, basically. And we'll see, maybe by feel alone, if we notice them getting through the malt quicker. Oh, look at that, they're rolling the barrels up. They look close to each other. <laughs> Looks like he's just grabbing the other guy's ass. If we just get the perspective right on that. 
we can make it loot. Almost. <laughs> anyway, they're rolling those barrels over to the tavern, I'd imagine. Man, where did they get the nice dresses? Like, the nice colors that they have here. The dyes. This guy as well, looking very dapper. Look at this guy. He's a joiner, oh yeah. Little artisan. Fancy. Someone's been doing well for themselves. <laughs> He's got his blue pants on and she's ready for battle. She's heading over to the pub to get her man out of there. <laughs> hey, sorry. Down bad. <laughs> I just uh, I just saw the live by accident. I'm definitely following your channel. Hey, appreciate that, I Tornado. Thank you. It does get produced faster, says Jamie Kel, but both families are locked into that job. Yeah, that's, I guess, the drawback. They're locking them down. So does that mean if you have a subplot and it's not a workshop and you get another house in there, you just have two families? In fact, I'm pretty sure when you upgrade to Tier 3, you get four families. That seems awfully good. I'm really just waiting for these guys to harvest. Oh, it looks like they're actually doing it. Bits, bits have already been plucked. Although it didn't look like it, really. We have very little vegetables. Or maybe not. It seems to rain a lot on this difficulty as well, so I apologize for any blurriness on the streams. I can't turn it off. Have they done this as well? The flax is done as well. So I actually never set anything up to deal with that. So what do we need? Industry? Dyer's workshop. Workers convert berries into dyes. Oh. I haven't seen a use for that. I wonder if you combine it with a weaver or something. Workers use wool to produce yarn and flax to produce linen. Well, let's get some linen going. A weaver's workshop. Maybe put it out this way. Would it be wrong to tuck it in this way or should we aim it the other way? No, this is fine. Why not? More people get to work. We create a little trail that goes around the side of it as well. Alright, cool. Alright, any attacks on the horizon? None so far, but the last one was four units. Right now we can still only field we can field almost two archer units and and a half sword arm units. That's something. And then soon enough when we get the approval up, we'll start taxing people, we'll make some money and then refield our retinue again. That's the plan anyway. Good morning, Mr. Crunch. Only one family will work the artisan job. The others can do whatever you need them to. Really? That seems like overpowered almost, but that's great. <laughs> Wish it was online. Yeah, it'd be cool if there was multiplayer, but I think that one's a long, long, long way off if ever. I don't know if people know this, but this game is made by one person, so everything at the moment anyway. So everything in terms of like what you'd like to see is sort of through that lens. It's like, oh, how much can one person reasonably do? Now, when the game comes out, I mean, I'm sure he's already had big cash injections. I mean, the game's com coming to Game Pass, so that's a that's a bag right there, as the kids say. And he has Patreon and stuff, so I'd like to think he'll start thinking about, you know, maybe making a team, even keeping it nice and lean and agile. But, um, yeah, hopefully he can get more boots on the ground and get a few more things done simultaneously. I would hope. Right, I wonder, can we do any upgrades? So it'll tell us with a little icon, right, if we can. Yeah, these ones are all ready to upgrade, actually. Um, I'm just afraid to upgrade the ones with vegetables. I'm just worried that we won't still get the harvest. I'm guessing we will. Maybe I shouldn't be so cautious. All right, four new upgrades right there, please. Now, just for equality's sake, we'll do five. They all have vegetable patches. These guys have goats and goats. These guys have goats. What do they have? Chickens? Yeah. Maybe Pravis had a bug. It locked both families into the artisan job. Oh, you saw it from Pravis? Hmm. Two house plots and backyard extension are quite good. Seems like you don't all of your plots to you don't want all your plots to be that way? Well why? What would be the drawback then? 
what would be the drawback? <laughs> Not that I'm a pure efficiency gamer, but there must be something, right? There must be some reason that you don't do that to every household. Because it's definitely space efficient. You can cram two together closer than you can build two plots together. Waiting for that weapon trader to come by again. Come on, man. Well, he's heading off map at the moment. What a bop, this song. Uh, we're going to start forest reforesting over this way again. Uh, maybe we could make that a bit smaller. Alright, good. Approval. Just on a few of these houses aren't quite happy for some reason. Multiple types of food and fuel. That's fine. Yeah, it would be cool to make that like a brewer in future because then... Oh, they didn't have a plot at the back though, did they? No. <laughs> Can't do that then. Uh, just by being next to the uh, tavern. Is there a way to keep your army permanently? Um, nope. Nope. You can hire mercenaries and keep them permanently. As long as you can keep paying them. They're very expensive though. Uh, for your own military, like, so if we want to raise troops, we create new unit. They're militia. They come from our houses, right? These are the people who work our jobs and live in our homes. It's the same people. They, that's why we need a certain amount of them to be able to field. So for instance, right now, if I tried to have three of these units. We only have 76 adult males that can fill the units. And we also only have a limited amount of bows right now. So we couldn't anyway, but we're also limited by the people. So when we make these units and we tell them to go rally out here, you'll see your productivity will fall sharply because technically it's not people that are assigned to jobs, it's families. So the, the wife might still be doing some bits or the son because the game, the way it works at the moment, we, every family has um, a husband, wife, and son, right? So we have a wife, son, husband. Every family has that. And there's no kids in the game. Sons are just adult males, as far as I can tell. But I don't think they're the ones... Sorry, there's no one in that house. But I don't think they're the ones that actually go and become part of the military. They're just considered son. So they're sort of like a soft way to keep your economy going while the men go out and fight, I guess. Um... That's as far as I understand it anyway, so. Although I could be wrong, actually, because here it's just treated as males and females. There's actually nothing to do with children in this list at all. But maybe it is just all the males. No, it wasn't all the males, because we saw... Although I guess we didn't have weapons last time. It probably is all the males. Sorry to go back and forth on this. When we raised our army last time, there were some men left behind. But that's because we didn't have enough weapons for everyone. So maybe the husband and the sons all run out, join the battles... Every adult man. This number, by the way, doesn't add up. So we can see we have 114 population. But if you count out those numbers, uh, it doesn't add up. And that's because, for some reason, probably just by mistake, it's counting the level 2 families in level 1. And I think that's just because here, you know, you can have level 1 or higher. So this is almost like, how many level 1 families or higher do you have? So it's 76 plus 38. So we have 76 men, adult men. Including sons, I guess. Yeah, it says it right there. So 76 and then 38 women. Uh, so that, that, that aligns with this number that we're seeing here. 76. So we can see, just look at level 1 families. 76 and 38. We can field 76 men. Anyway, so that's why you can't have a permanent army. Because you're taking away from your economy. If you do. Unless you get mercenaries. As far as I know, there's not going to be any mod support currently in the game. But maybe in the future, but I don't know. Um, but just by looking at the game files, you can't do any... I mean, it's an Unreal Engine game, so I'm sure he could open it up somehow to do some modding. But from what I could see, I could be totally wrong. Maybe you can. But they're all in these large pack files. So I know that there are Unreal editors out there where you can open these pack files. But it just depends what's accessible and what isn't. So I, I guess I don't know is the answer. I shouldn't say it's not moddable because technically, I don't know. Um, it's definitely not super open, though. You must need some tools to do something with it. It's not like Total War, you can just see the database and mess with it. You know. Yeah. It's coming after 1.0? Yeah, I, I guess that's official mod support. I was just wondering though more like, can you mod the game? At all. 
if you just wanted to. You know what I mean? I'm sure they intend to make it where a household can have kids. So you can see them grow and get to work. Yeah, no, I would assume that's the idea. Yeah. Did you know that peasants in level 3 houses are the only houses that can let them have plate, mail, and gambesons? Uh, yeah, vaguely, because you need level 3 to actually make the, um, whatever the equipment it is, right? So I've seen that. If you want to get this, it... uh, you need level 3, don't you? Although that just says development branch m missing. Are you sure? Do you need level 3? I thought... I have level 3 houses in my other save. I haven't built, made plate mail or gambesons yet. Or whatever. But yeah, I'm not sure. Are you sure you need level 3? Because it seems to me there that all you need is this and this and this. You said no. Well, okay. Well, I guess we'll find out eventually anyway, but if someone else can confirm that, that'd be good. How much money do we have now? So we've 19 sidearms, 73 warbows. So we said we needed, what was it? 70... It was just 72, so we've got enough now. You can stop making bows. That's two full units of war bows. Of archers, I should say. 36, 36. And just for fun, if we want, we could just rally those guys to see what they look like. Nice By the way, does anyone know... How to do this. Are we able to gar- Oh, are you going to get in there? No. Um, I built these little towers, and it says, like, you know, units can garrison them. But how do you garrison them? But wait for our units to come together, and I'll try to click it. We, we were theorizing that you needed an archer unit to do it, but I don't think it's interactable. It might not be ready yet. Junior says, 83, 88 likes, 305 in chat. Let's all give the stream a thumbs up. Yeah, shout out, man. Hit that like button. Let's get to something really stupid. Hit it if you like the video. You don't have to. Don't feel pressured otherwise. It's all good. If you hate me, hit the dislike button. And that's fine too. Alright, there's our two units. Ready to go. A little bit disorganized. Yeah, so right clicking, you know, it doesn't do anything there. I don't know how they're going to get in that way, but apparently they will. Kind of curious to see that now to mess with them. Anyway, we'll send these guys back to work. Doing some drills, some training drills. Running. Okay, I want 10 laps around the manor now. <laughs> if you're here, you like Darren? Well, no, not necessarily. Some people said they just found my stream. <laughs> Some people made it inside. Oh my god. They're glitching through the walls. We have a vulnerabil vulnerability there. What a disgrace. Anyways, right, we'll leave that. Let's just, uh... Yeah, I don't think we can. I don't think we can. Because some people were like, why don't you just defend this thing? It's like, I, I just don't think you can. <laughs> yet. Um, it's very work in progress. Alright, back to work. Good to see we can get two full units though. So how are we doing for everything else? Fuel is still quite low, but that's okay. We're keeping ahead of it. I've been purposely selling. We never go above that amount, so it's always staying at two. But food is great, so that's not a problem. We want to get more people moving in. Our approval is getting better. So let's get more houses going. Let's get another. So the market's there. I'm trying to think. I guess just a line of houses here. I hate building these so compact, but I really just want to get more people moved in. Do something like this. Not enough goods. You're telling me... Oh, yeah, we're out of timber, finally. All right, they must have put it all to use. Get back working on that, please. Get back working on that. And the farms are probably... Oh, yeah, probably that's all done now, isn't it? Yeah, they're all doing nothing. Fetching water. September. Did they harvest everything? Even the... Oh, this was fallow. Yeah, so they don't have to do that. Great. All right, we can take these guys largely off that. Leave one on just for now. We'll pop someone... Oh, yeah, because they thresh it as well, actually. They probably have at this point. Oh, yeah, look, it's all ready to go. 25 grain is in there. So it is one-to-one. -one. 25 wheat became 25 great, uh, grain, at least for that. We'll put someone in the bakers. Actually, I'll make all the flour first, and then we'll do that afterwards. Afterwards. Lol, make smaller markets? Nah. I want one big market. 
Maybe in the future. For now, I'm okay with it. Mercenary companies available. 14. Oh, yeah, we're making the large shields now. Nice. We're not bringing in any spears yet, but just good to have it, just in case. And we could sell some of these things, potentially, as well. Is there a roadmap for this game at all? No. Not as far as I know. Alright, just waiting on getting a bit more timber now. I've kind of let it go a bit lower than I expected. I don't think the sawmill was actually active. No, it wasn't. Alright, let's start building. Do we have enough now? Four? I have to wait a little bit longer. And we'll probably move that logging camp as we seek to expand further. I reckon people will get their stuff just fine. I can't imagine being there is too far from that market. That'd be a bit psycho in my opinion. I would imagine you need multiple markets if you're going to push out like this far or something. I would hope. And they'll be slower to get their stuff, but I think they'll still get it. Alright, we've got 12 now. Let's go. Sure. I wonder if we have any malt or anything left now. I think we're probably out of all that stuff by now. Yeah, we have some clay. We could just get rid of the clay that we have by putting someone on the furnace. We have flax as well, and we built that um, weaver workshop so we get the people weaving. Winter's approaching. We'll just put some extra farmers out there just to plow the land and sow the fields as well again. Plowing by hand. God bless him. So this one's going fallow. No bread this year. Although that's been plowed. Yeah, I want this to be wheat next, actually. There we go. Fallow. Fallow twice in a row? I don't know. Probably not. Although it's pretty bad, so maybe, actually. <laughs> I don't know. It's not time. I know. I I know you want me to get the horse and other things, but money. The problem is we still don't have a sword unit. I need a full sword unit, uh, at least one, and then we've got two archer units. That's hopefully good enough for whatever attack. Because remember, we don't have a retinue anymore. But once we have that, then any extra money, I'm um, start taxing it. <laughs> uh, well, actually, yeah. What was I going to do with that? We wanted to tax the money for what reason? I can't remember. There is. Oh, the retinue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, there's only one person building at the moment, but approval is just about over 50, so we should be okay. They do have all the requirements. Surprise approval is as low as it is. Lack of entertainment. Yeah, oh, we still have a little bit of ale. Yeah, that's the last, that's literally the last barrel of ale in there. Enemy unit spotted, so this is the next attack. Only 18, that can't be right. Unless the others start mobilizing again. Oh, we probably just can't see them actually because they're in the woodland. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, we got a few coming in. So it's all going to be down to this, whether we survive this or not. And we have purchase orders for more and more weapons. Told him to get up to 36. So at the moment, we'll be fielding 22 with two archers. Godspeed. Game looks really good. Yeah. How did you make the wider roads? The roads get wider automatically when um, the latch point of a building is positioned onto it. So, for instance, let's just say, just as a complete example here, let's say we had some wire we rode like this. Right, so it's a small standard road. We do construction, we do a burgage plot, we go like this. Whatever. So the front of the building is going to be there. 
Do I, I literally don't even have the planks. To, oh, I do have the planks. This is the worst road ever. <laughs> it's like the worst way to do this. I was just trying not to be in the trees. There's trees and rain on the screen, so I thought it'd be really blurry anywhere else. Right, let's try down here where it's nice and clean. Right, it's so there. We've got a road. So let's building on to this. Burgage plot, something like that. Yep. So those latch points, they make the thicker road. So if we just even committed to that right now. The road is just thickened up. So that's how. Now there's also the standard trade road that you start the game with. That goes through the map. That one's kind of thick by default as well. Hopefully that answers the question. Did we get those vegetables? I feel like they never harvested them. It's November. Maybe they're just not done yet. It's cool seeing people having their bows in their houses. Two archer units. Let's make that other unit now. So 22. We can only field 26 people, actually, without bringing more people in. So we're kind of at our cap anyway now. And they're coming in from all the way over there. We'll let time play and just see how many units are coming in. That's so four. Last time there was five. There might be a fifth one coming out of the woods. Or maybe not. Don't worry about that. We're not running out of fuel. Game doesn't know what it's talking about. All right, only four units. We have two archer units, though, so we're going to need our main guy to really hold the line while the others maybe circle around the sides and fire in. We might have to just allow friendly fire and hope for the best. <laughs> um, that's my best tactic at the moment. We could maybe fight over the fields, too. Would that be good? Because we have a bit of a hill advantage here if they're coming in from that direction. So they're coming in right dead center screen out that way. And this is a bit of a hill, so maybe if we have our guys holding here and we run some archers around the side and fire up into them, maybe archers around this side fire out into them, maybe that could work. I don't really want to go further down the hill. They might end up burning one or two of these things. Though, which could be a problem, I guess. Can they burn fields when they're not actually growing yet? They're in sowing progress at the moment. Stone walls, power pits, and towers, maybe. Can't build any of that. Quite right, closer to the town. You need open ground to shoot. You mean over there? Oh, I'm going to probably fight there, right? Any further in the town wouldn't be ideal for archers. Yeah. So we're kind of going to wait for them to appear from the tree line. It's still going to be a while before they get here. Why is the fertility so low? I don't know. It just is. It's just really bad in the game. Like, we actually built this on the best fertility spots we could. It's getting worse now over time because we've already harvested. But that's what crop rotation is for. You can also put animals on it to fertilize it for that year. And then it's better the next year. So you just need a lot of land, basically, for good fertilities. We could go down this way and get really good fertility out there. Um, we had great barley fertility down here. Kind of coming back now that we've left it fallow. So you just got to keep rotating and keep moving and let them go fallow. The way to, yeah, get better fertilities. But you never get like 100%. Best I've ever seen is like 60. And even on a field that big, 60 only gets you like 40 sacks of wheat or something. You can know, have they kind of done their job now. I feel like they pretty much have for the threshing side of things. And these guys too. Oh, sorry, not them. They can go back out. That's the weaver. Have we made all that stuff now? Shoes. Linen one. I'm not seeing... Yeah, we still have a little bit of flax. Where the hell... There it is. Communal 11. I wanted to make some bread. Don't have any. All right, still taking their sweet ass time getting over here, but they're almost here now. Are there any defensive buildings in this game? Yes, but they don't work. <laughs> this is the only one. You can build a manor that has walls. 
And when the attack happens, we see civilians run in there for protection. You can build towers, but they don't they don't work at the moment. So basically the answer is no. Other than almost cosmetically, yes. I only control one territory at the moment. How are they going to meet up with any of their boys? No extra sidearms were purchased. No extra people have moved in. Alright, I think it's time to get ready. It's interesting that it'll lower the amount. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Yep, so we've only got 25 swords, so that's as many people as we can field, so let's go. That's weird, not allowed to deploy in here, no? Also, why is it showing me the fertility screen? No overlay, please. Resources added to the inventory. What the hell is that about? Oh, the people that were carrying things, they just get automatically added. Hmm, interesting. I feel like they should run, deposit, and then keep going. <laughs> we're talking realism. Which I think we are. Now, it might not look like much of a hill, but trust me, the smallest incline makes a big difference in this game, so... If we go to a random building... You can see the contour lines. I really don't want them torching buildings, so it might line up even next to the the windmill there, just in case, because they just run by and torch things, so that'll be my plan. All right, so, sorry, time is playing now. Let's get moving. This will tell them not to run. I think you have to do it individually, actually. There we go. Because they get tired super quick as well. All right, no retinue to guide us. No men at arms. Um, yeah, I mean, in the trailer for the game, there's cavalry and, like, loads of other units. Also, in the mercenary screen, we can see that there are other types of units. Just These are just the militia units you can field. But you can hire mercenaries that have other types of units at the moment. But for now, it's not that much. But it, in theory, should be more a bit later. Right, gonna go like that. I'm gonna keep... So, here's the strat that I'm gonna employ. My two archer units are gonna sit at the back and fire at the oncoming attack. I want everyone to engage this militia unit, right? Obviously. Maybe even put these guys just a little further back. Right, so we want everyone engaging them if possible. I guess we could spread even thinner. I don't like doing that really, but it's fine. So stand your ground. The defense is doubled. And then the idea for me, at least, is once they fire their first couple volleys, then we move them out to the sides and try fire in and hope for the best. It's risky, though, because if we move these guys out and then they break off a unit to go against one of them, we're screwed. I don't even think these guys can fight in melee. <laughs> now, we have shoot at will. So instead of firing a volley, they just aim directly at the enemy. Increases accuracy up close, but decreases accuracy at half the maximum range or more. So we'll leave that off at first. But when we run around the side, we'll turn that on and we'll probably turn on fire at will mode. Or friendly fire mode, which means they're not going to be afraid to fire into the blob. <laughs> Depending on the size of the blob and what we're dealing with. Would you be quiet? Yeah. Nobody cares about what's in your bucket. Someone's selling carrots and cabbages. Lady, do you not understand what's happening right now? <laughs> She's selling her two bits of veg. Spaghetti line. Yeah, I don't like spaghetti lines. But we're just trying to, going to try and hold as many of them in a line as we can. While the archers do some work. They are on fire at will, right? Yeah. Missile alert. Soldiers watch for enemy missiles. Chance to avoid or block enemy missiles is doubled, but defense is halved. That's fine. Just do your thing. Alright, first group is coming in. Our range line. Oh my god, we're firing already. Now, these guys can take quite <laughs> the goat. Can take quite the beating for arrows before they'll start to fall, but they are being chipped away at. 
Oh, there we go. Where are they going? They just gave up immediately, did they? No way. The goat. Watch the goat. Oh my god. I think they might have just run away. Or they're moving and looping around. Which would be a lot worse. They're going to find another way into the town, actually, or go to one of my buildings that's over there. Sorry to look away. I thought maybe that building was on fire. Yeah, go for those guys now. Oh, they're coming back in. They're spreading the field. Okay, for some reason the music has gone off, so I'm going to turn off the music and turn on the game's battle soundtrack, so just bear with me. Otherwise, there's no atmosphere, and things get very awkward when it gets suddenly very quiet. So just bear with me one second. Your prediction this is to navigate my folders here. Get the game soundtrack. Because there's awesome battle soundtrack in the game, but it never plays. Or it might just be reserved for um, when the battles are actually big, rather than these little rabbles that we're fighting at the moment. All right, here we go. That's a bit better. Samuel Skulavik. Thank you very much for becoming a channel member. Appreciate that. All right, let's go. Oh my god, that was a bit danger close on that one. Right, they're basically involved now, so I would say start... Oh shit, no they're not, no they're not, no they're not. How are my units doing? We still have 25 actually, so that's okay. Okay, move, move, move. You go that way, you go this way. So this is going to be... Maybe I won't allow friendly fire right away and we'll see what they do. Because there's still some guys hanging around the back there. They aren't doing much. So just shoot at will. Oh, stupid. I, I don't like that notifications are there. And it just appears when you hover over it. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, shoot at will. So hopefully just aim for the guys in the back there first. Alright, some of the units have broken already. That's why it said influence gained. That's it. GG. Easy. Pro strats. I am a bit of a genius myself. I am a bit of a military tactician myself. That was actually super easy. If you are here yesterday, we had a battle that was the same amount of people, but we had only militia to defend. Or sorry, only swordsmen to defend. And they fought to the last man. It's a bit silly that they're running through our town though, I must admit. But they're out of here. Alright, I can't believe we actually survived. I really did think that they'd get to the archers and that'd be it. But we're good. Can we cut the music, please? Thank you. Yeah, easy enough. Maybe a little anticlimactic, but easy enough. I think we had the right strategy. That's going to play havoc with our uh, farming, though, now. Speaking of, let's just take some of the farmers away. We need to get some people on the corpse pit <laughs> to bury these bodies. Alright, so that's pretty much it until we now go out and start taking out these bandit camps, which is what I want to do. And the same with these bandits that are on the edge. Now to do that, we just need some a little bit, a little bit, not much, but a little bit more weaponry, and then we'll push out and start attacking these guys ourselves. Uh, and hopefully that will actually then generate us money so we can get ourselves out of this hole that we've been in for a little while. Oh, and the in-game soundtrack needs to be put back up. Bodily bodies of fertilized field, easy. How many deaths? I don't think we had any, because our units had 25. Unless we lost some in the archer, we only fielded 25 men. I don't think we had any, from what I could see. I should have looked beforehand, but we have 117 now. If you click back in the video, you could let me know, I guess, and see did we have 117 before. All right, everyone get back to work. It's a regular day. I wonder how big the attacks get in this mode, because the the Baron in the middle mode, the second mode for the game, he can send in like a couple, like 300 troops. I wonder will we see that for this game, or for this mode? Because it does say it's harder. You'd assume so.
Approval is good. People are moving in. 45 houses with 39 families. Because all those new ones have been built here. Alright. What now? <laughs> I don't know what to do now, really. We've got 69 pieces of equipment, so... We have 172 pieces of equipment now in total. 25 sidearms, 73 war bows. Don't worry about those messages, that's fine. 38 small shields and large shields. So we're still purchasing at the trading post a few extra weapons. But our bottleneck isn't actually the weapons anymore. It's people that we need to field. It's the adult male population, of which we have 79. Okay. Archers are OP. They melee as well, do they? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Because they're not given a weapon. Like a hand weapon. Melee weapon. What's the stage of this farm, by the way? Oh, that's fallow. This one, it's fully planted. What about the one down here? That hasn't had anything happen to it yet. We need, um, still need people on the farm. Yeah. Climbing by hand, transporting, okay. Such a shame you can't take those weapons. <laughs> Even to sell them. Look at that. He's got a. Gr Look at that sword. Beautiful. What a tragedy that I had to come to this. Ask how you're playing this game. For me, it shows its release is mid-April. I was sent it by the developer. Will it be free? Almost certainly not. Uh, it is on Game Pass, though, so you could possibly get it there. You don't mind paying free 99 And people loot dead bodies? No. We talked about that earlier, where I assume in the future you'll be able to get stuff off them. Because even if your own troops die, you lose the weapons that they had. But right now, you don't even see them carrying the body, so... Ugh. Down she goes. Doing a good job. Messy work, but it has to be done. Cool game. They should add loot, dead body, QND finishing, fishing. They should add loot and fishing. Yeah, a lot of people actually have I've seen saying that. I never, I never even thought about it. But they're like, oh, there's no lakes. Like, oh yeah, I guess not. There's no water in the game. There is a river that runs through the map. Uh, where is it? There's a stream somewhere. There it is. But yeah. That's not in yet either. This is the thing I was saying. I feel like um, a lot of people... I'm not saying that people are complaining necessarily, but when the game comes out, I do think you will have a lot of complaints of things that aren't in the game rather than what is in the game. And I understand. I understand why people feel that way. I feel that way about loads of games. But um, with this one, I kind of just appreciate everything that's there. Just knowing... I think it's a bit unfair in some ways, but knowing it's one guy who made the game, I'm like... I think it's amazing all the stuff that's there. I kind of can't really fault him for anything that's missing because I'm like, well, it's more than I'll ever do for anything ever in my life, pretty much. <laughs> um, I should hide that uh, the bodies of the cloud of shame. That'd be funny. Alright, speed it up. The struggle at the moment is to bring in more people, but because we have a lack of entertainment, because we've got no ale, it's a bit of a struggle, as mentioned. Although, actually, we could import the barley. That could work. We have 60 regional wealth. Let's try to bring in the barley crops. It's 25 just to set up the root, and then it's 12 per barley. It's so expensive, man, until you get that perk. So to get that perk, we'd need three level 3 plots, which you could do, and then just downgrade them if you wanted to kind of cheese it a bit.
Feels fine, don't worry. <laughs> I'm only a little worried. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll just uh, softly increase the amount, because we're selling it all the time. I'll say the reserve is now 150, so don't sell it until it's 150. Just to give us a bit of a a better threshold and barrier before selling that stuff. As bandits will randomly steal it, as you can see, we just lost 10, we're losing bits of bread and eggs and all sorts. Is everything done now? Going home, going home, waiting, transporting. I think they would have done this field probably by now. Barley. No? Uh, I hope they'll work it. It says barley. Second year fallow, third year fallow. Hmm. I hope I didn't miss the... Oh, low priority? Maybe just medium priority on it now. Yeah, maybe it's being considered fallow. I, you can still work it, though. Even though it's December, you can still plow, can't you? Or is it too cold now? Winter. Oh, no. It says autumn. Plowing and sowing. Okay. Fair enough. We missed our window on it, maybe. This is the battles. Uh, but they can get out there in, in about February, usually, is when they can start doing it again. So I'm sure they'll be fine. You can still possibly get a harvest off by the end of the year, then. I'll reduce this down. We don't need them there anymore. The weaver can go. The communal oven. Still some bread to be made, I guess. Got a decent amount of leather. So they'll be making that into shoes, won't they? Leather and shoes. That's two types of clothing that they need. They've got pretty much everything. It's just the uh, tavern that we can't supply because we don't have any ale. Because we don't have any malt. Because we don't have any barley. But the level 1 houses could probably still be upgraded, actually. The ones that do have things. So if we do this, we can. it'll show me a little green symbol for the ones that can be upgraded. So all of these houses could be upgraded. And they'll generate, generate more regional wealth for me. Alright, just let time speed up. What time is it, by the way? How long have we gone? It's only going to be going for two hours at the moment. That's good. How do you manage public order and happiness? Uh, I don't know. I feel like public order isn't really that important in the game at the moment. It's more the approval, right? So forget public order, but approval... Um, ultimately, it's just a matter of meeting all these demands. That's it. You know, they need water. Okay, they need a tavern. If you don't supply it, approval is going to continuously fall. So we'll have to try to get a trade route going, but I'm just waiting to get a bit more money. Church level, you know, all that stuff. So as long as you're just meeting all the demands, approval will go up. In order to meet those demands, though, you need to be in proximity to a market. And it's probably a good idea to do, have families dedicated to just moving stuff around, like on the granary and the storehouse. Because they'll set up the stalls and they'll sell multiple types of things. Rather than the people who... If you never put people on the um, kind of logistics buildings and you just put them directly on the resource buildings, they'll set up a stall, but they seem to only sell berries or only sell meat. Whereas if they're on a granary, they'll set up a market and sell both. So you can kind of cut out the middleman there a bit. Or just cut down on the amount of families you have to have assigned to things. And it seems to be a more efficient way of getting people their stuff. Uh, seems like we're lacking a bit on the firewood side of things. We have tons of firewood, but it's just more about like setting up the... What do you call it? Markets for it. You don't need to establish a trade route where trade route is not required. That's true, actually. Yeah, thanks, Philip. I forgot about that. And thanks for the super chat. I did mention that earlier. It's true. You don't need a trade route, technically. Uh, you could just set this to import anyway. It just means that there's no dedicated trader. But I'm a little hesitant to bring in barley anyway because it's so expensive. 12? I'd like to get the rest of these weapons in. We need 36 sidearms and then we're going to send a guy out. And what we could do is clear out bandit camps, and you get money from doing that. And we could bring it right into regional wealth, and then just trade for the ale, or whatever, the barley then. That might be a way of doing it. Or you could feed our own treasury, and we could just field mercenaries next time we get attacked. So, little debate there. Do we give it to the town, or do we give it to ourselves? But that's what I'd like to do. Pretty much in March, I think we'll have what we need to then raise our army, go out of the town, and just hit the bandit camps that are adjacent to us. The ones that aren't too far. So that one there. There's another one here. And this one actually has a couple of units. We want to pay revenge to them. They're the guys that, like, destroyed everybody. They killed 36 of my people. And really set us back uh, early on. We still have room for five more households for people to move in as well, which is good.
Yeah, so we could have a look at it. New mercenary companies available, right? So I can't even remember where you do that. Isn't it like the manor, I guess? No, sorry, it's this screen. Yep. The Wayward Sons. So we could get light mercenary archers or heavy archers, right? So those would be the armored variant. We could hire local thugs, super cheap, 15, but it's not regional wealth, it's treasury cost. Or we could hire the Battle Brothers, light mercenary spearmen or light mercenary infantry. They're still going to be better equipped than our militia. And they'd be 50, but that's 50 per month. So you want to have a decent treasury just to field them for a couple of months at least. Thanks again, Philip, for the super chat. Appreciate it. How population grows? Are the kids in the game now? There's no kids, but population grows if approval's above 50%. Population will grow by one family per month will move in if you have an available house. So you, that's two requirements, right? You have to be over 50% approval and you have to be, you have to have a house for them to move into. If you're over 75, two families will move in per month and that's it. That's how populations grow. There's no kids in the game at the moment. People are listed in the houses as husband, wife, and son. Wife, husband, son. But the son is just an adult male. So for every woman, there's two men. And like I said, it's somewhat necessary for when you go out on military campaign. People still need to run the economy. And that's why you assign families to buildings, not people. Anyway, so that's dropping now. It's going to continue dropping and kind of fluctuating a bit. Because all they're lacking... And this wouldn't happen if you're playing on normal, by the way. But playing on hard, if you have anything that you're not meeting... Approval will just continuously, continuously, continuously fall. Because it knows that you're like, you're just not meeting it. You're maybe trying to game it or something. It's like, oh, I'll just meet everything else. And that'll be good enough. No. But on normal difficulty, it is good enough. You could just have this one not be fulfilled. And uh, everything would probably be fine. It would probably even out somewhere. Or at least it did for me. But on this harder difficulty, approval is much more stinging. Oh, by the way, if it falls below 25, you lose families per month. So we're in that neutral zone right now. Fluctuating between positive and neutral, I guess. Alright, how much are we up to? 29 sidearms. Might be good enough to start going. I just don't want to march in winter. I'd like to march when it's sunny. <laughs> or clear weather. Uh, this building can pretty much go away now, basically, I would say. Or move. Maybe we'll move it in here. We could build more houses and stuff in this way. Let's try to make a bit more of an organic looking plot. Have some houses in between here. I like how you put the market at the center of the town. Thank you. Can you craft weapons and armor? Yep, that's what we've been doing. So, um, you know, not to retread everything, but these houses here. So basically, when you build a house, you have plots at the back. You don't have to. We made these ones really small, so they don't have any. But if you do have a plot at the back, you can specialize it to have animals. You have to pay regional wealth. Regional wealth is the money that the town has. Treasury wealth is the, town that is the money that I have. So I still spend regional wealth, but it always has to go into the town in some form. But anyway, we gave them goats. That supplies us with hides. You know, you get them vegetables. They grow, obviously, just once a year and they're harvested for food variety because they need multiple types of food. Anyway, long story short, when you upgrade your houses, you can actually change that then from just vegetables into perhaps something like a blacksmith, a cobbler, uh, a joiner who will make shields. Uh, eventually, the armorer, right, makes helmets and more heavy types of armor, male armor and things like that. Uh, the brewer, etc., right? So here, we have a joiner's workshop. So these guys... They actually make, at the moment, heavy shields for us. In fact, they've blown through all of the planks that we had, so we could tell them to stop doing that. We just made it for fun, really. Just in case we ever want to field spears. But we have 53 large shields now in storage. That's good. Uh, this is our brewery, right? They take in malt and make ale. This is our fletcher. They take in planks and make war bows. And this is our cobbler. They take in leather and make shoes. Uh, but there's other types. Like we said, we, have, we don't have a blacksmith or anything yet, so... We can get all that stuff in the future. We don't have an iron deposit in our region. We used to, but we used it all. So we'd have to import the iron. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm buying weapons and making shields and bows. Because we can just make them for wood. But the weapons, we'd need iron. So I'm just purchasing them. And I'm purchasing it with regional wealth. 
And that's happening every time a trader kind of comes by here. So we've set a target that we want. We want 36, because that's the standard unit in the game. Now, the other problem to that is you can only field as many uh, you know units as you have families and people. So we've currently got 80 men, right? So 80 men we can field. So for us, that's going to be uh, a standard militia sword unit, right? We can have 30 of them because we only have 30 swords. But then we can have a full archer unit. And then the next one, we can only have 24 because we're just running out of people. But that's, and it's actually kind of, yeah, balances it between the three units eventually if you want to as well. Or we could hire mercenaries if we had our own money. But I'm not taxing anyone right now on purpose, so that's okay. We'll get money from the bandit camps. Right, so with these three units, we're in January. Once we get to March, I'm going to send these three units out. But we'll just leave them there for now. They're not mustered right now. They're just, like, organized, right? So what happens is the families go and get the weapons that they need, and they store them in their houses, knowing that they could be drafted. So it's a good idea to have that ready to go first. It just makes things a little bit quicker, although they sort of kind of get it a bit super fast. But you can see all the shields and bows, they're running down here to get them out of the storehouse. In fact, I'd meant to do this before, but this should really just say... I guess I'll just leave it. It's working fine. But I was going to say, I'd ideally like them to go to this storehouse to get their weapons. In fact, there is tons of storage there, so I will do that. So what we could just do here is go to advanced and just say, don't store anything here. Except what I want you to, which is clay and what we make from clay, which was the tiles. So you can store those two things here. And I would even say that this storehouse, even though it's big and everything, maybe just don't bother storing those things here. Make sure they're stored down there. And they should get sorted out and organized eventually. And that way, when they're going to grab their weapons, they just kind of run to the center of the town now. Those 12 size units, they're knights. Yeah, so when you build a manor, you get given five for free. Uh, but ours died in the battle of yesterday. Uh, out there. So the retinue are super powerful and you can customize them. We can't see them now, but you'd see the model here. You get to choose the, their body, weapon, block, all that kind of cool stuff. And we can recruit new units for 50 ahead. Uh, there's also things you can do to get this up to 26. Can't remember what you need to do for that. Or you could also recruit from the people that we have, provided you can give them the weapon. So if you don't want to pay the money to get a unit, you can specifically give them. Um, Pole arms and mail armor. And a, I think they need all three, right? They need all three. And then you hit recruit ministerial. Oh, so actually, it says locked in early access this. But this isn't. You can just pay 50 to get an instant unit. And then as they get kills, they get experience. And they can level up and get perks locked again in early access. That's the idea. What's here in this version, though, is we can hire them. We can get up to 26, I think. They're elite units. They're strong. We can kind of customize their look and feel a bit. And I believe that's it. They're storing weapons in the manor as well, which is interesting. All right, still January. Trying to get through January quickly. Then we'll head out. Mercenary companies available. Still not growing because of that ale issue. So yeah, it might be time to bring in some malt just so we can at least bring growth up. Uh, so, I'll have to just bite the bullet and make the payment. So we'll go import the target for barley. I would say let's try to keep it at 20, 20 sacks of barley at all times. And then we'll have the malt house activated. Let's put a family on that just so that whenever it does come in, they'll immediately get working with it. And then the brewer will just do his thing when he can. Oh, oh sorry, just Gordo. Uh, Gordo. On that note, can you have multiple of the same sort of artisan? I think so, yeah. I've never seen a, it tell me that I can't build more. Land of wealth. Oh yeah, it does say plot level too low. That person was right, actually, whoever said that earlier. And then Sandy said, Philip got so triggered by Darren's ineptitude, he had to make a donation. <laughs> That's the way it works, isn't it? Bigger, big, the biggest streamers, people mostly donate just so they can write their message rather than anything. But smaller streamers, you know, we just chat with the chat because we, you know, there's not so many of you that we can't catch up to it <laughs> most of the time. But yeah, if you want to get your message read, a super chat's the best way to do it, right? It's just a dollar and you gotta read it, basically. Especially when it's like, I've been there as well. I don't know if I've ever donated, but I've definitely been there where you want to do that. Because it's like, oh, you know the answer and the streamer doesn't know. And it's like, come on, dude, it's this, it's this. No one else seems to get it. So it's like, look, I'll just donate a dollar, whatever. I enjoy the stream anyway. And this gets it in their face and they read it, you know? <laughs>
By the way, see, the one, a good reason I am actually waiting, now thinking about it, totally had this in mind, is that when it's cold and winter and you start marching, your efficiency goes down dramatically. So we, sh we really should wait just a little bit longer. Until the snow clears off the ground and then, then we can go. And it is clearing, so that's good. Oh, it's March, by the way. That was quick. <laughs> that suddenly jumped from January to March very quickly. Right. Farmers. I guess that's one reason I don't want to send people out, is actually we need people farming right now. Because I think what they're going to do is go down and get the barley going. Plowing, plowing, plowing. Yes, there's still plowing to be done down here. Whereas this field is fallow, and this one is going to be wheat, and... Oh, this needs to be plowed as well, actually. We're late to it. I think that's because of the battle. We didn't really get to do it in the autumnal months. What weapons, though? We're up to 36 sidearms now. If I just re jigger these units. Let's see. One, two, three. Yeah, it does. It spreads the units between all three. I don't know if you can change that or not. I'd rather they'd fill this one first than these two. I guess we could field them and then get the other units. So then it's 36, 36. And then maybe once we field those units, then we could do something different. I really shouldn't have done that, because now people are running back to get their weapons and stuff. It messes with them, so that's my bad. They've just stopped plowing right now, because they're probably all going to get their get their stuff. Some of them are coming down here, actually, which is good. This is medium priority, and this is also medium. Well, I'll just leave it as is now, but that should really one should be higher than the other, really. You can also build multiple farmhouses, so you don't have to run across the entire map every time. So maybe we should do that, too. comes out in a month uh in uh 26th of april yep will it release as early access yes are there victory conditions the victory conditions is to occupy every territory in this particular mode the victory conditions in the other mode i think is to defeat the baron and then there's a sandbox mode which is just endless you can actually choose to continue afterwards anyway i think we've got enough influence to claim three other yeah three other territories it's just we don't have the army to defend ourselves yet. If Because they'll immediately get destroyed, these other towns, if we set them up. But that's kind of the point. You're supposed to have... This is just one town. We're supposed to have, like, four of these on the go trading with each other. And frankly, we should be even bigger than this. It'd be nice if we had about, let's say, 100 houses. Would be good. Two or 300 population. But we're getting there. We're building up. It's just taking... I'm just being very cautious with it. Because of the setback we had yesterday. That looks like it's fully... Yeah, so they're sowing that field now. That's good. We're leaving this one fallow this year and next year because its fertility is Garbo. Alright, we've made all our purchases. and uh, We should be buying um, ale, actually, now. Or uh, barley, I should say. Yeah, there it is. One barley. Nice. <laughs> it's so expensive. It's 12 per bag. Uh, you only use one bag to get one malt to get one... Uh, what's it called? Um, ale. But the tavern's not active, so I'm hoping to store up some at least, and then we can activate it. Also, our meat deposits and berries are back, so hunting camp is active. Good. It's a family out there as well. Alright, let's just speed up time. I really want to muster and get moving out now. Bandit camp's got my... got our name on it. Let's see... There's going to be about 18 people there, I think. And then there's 10 here, I think. I think so, anyway. Uh, can you put animals to work on fields? Yeah, you can get an... So, you can get a heavy plow. And then an ox will plow the fields much faster for you. These, this isn't a tech tree, this is a development tree per region, so you sort of specialize the region to do what you want. Um, so you can't get everything per region. So, in order to get the next development point, we need level 3 plots. Now, when I played on normal, you can get level 3 plots within 2 hours. Easy. But it takes way longer and hard because of the approval rating. It's like nearly impossible to sustain a level 3 house at this stage. 
to um, can't do that because normally you could upgrade and it just sits there and it's totally fine. But when we upgrade, it'll be upset that it doesn't have what you need it to give it. Zinc YouTube uh, dropped a super chat for ten Ron. He says, "Hi Darren, I sent you an email. If you could check it, I get a lot of emails. Is it from? Will it? Is it from Zinc YouTube? I'll try to check it afterwards. I can't check it obviously right now on stream, but yeah, sure." Dude, I was sent an email for like a sponsorship offer me a ton of money and I didn't see it, so... Uh, you know, I actually see my comments and my chat much more, so if you're here, you could just ask me whatever it is, unless it's something quite pr private, I guess. Can you give me a general hint as to what it is? And thank you, by the way, for the super chat. You don't have to super chat. You could have just chatted regularly. You shouldn't have to do that just to get through to me. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. It's better to have the oxes fixed to a building or free. Free. Yeah, I learned not the hard way in that. So, from my observation, let's say that you put an ox on the logging camp, right? So you can do that. From my observation, what that ox will do, it'll be one ox assigned to gathering the logs and bring it to the building, but also distributing the logs that are here to anyone that needs them. It doesn't work how you'd hope it would work, which is one ox is dedicated to going back and forth, and then maybe the other ox can go and grab the logs doesn't work that way so because of that i think it's better to keep them free because then they will use like one will go and get the logs and one will go and they'll just kind of sort themselves out based on whoever needs what um otherwise i think it's a great idea that you can do that it's just a shame that it doesn't seem to have the priorities c quite correct or it would just be good if you could maybe assign two <laughs> i'd probably fix it as well uh i just wanted to drop you a message to let you know that i sent you an email regarding collaboration okay yeah i'll take a look Um, yeah, but not, not to be like dismissive, but I, I probably, I'm not really doing collaborations to be honest. I get it. I get it. people asking me now and then. You could have a million subs and I still probably just wouldn't do it, you know? Um, but I'll, I'll take a look anyway, see what you wanted to do. Hopefully it hasn't been too long since you sent the email. Apologies if it has. I'm, I'm particularly bad with getting to emails. To my own detriment. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've had people reach out to me to do Anno 1800 and Satisfactory together and stuff, but I just I just don't have the time to be doing it. How do you know which month it, which month it is? It says it right down here in the bottom right. It says it's May. Right, are these fields nearly done now? That one's fully sown. Is this one sown? This one's sown. All right, we can take the families off the farms for now. Let's muster these units and get moving. We're going on campaign. I won't recruit the other unit until they're all out here, and then we'll see if that helps a bit. Um, yeah, I don't know about other YouTubers, but I've, I've, generally speaking, it seems to be like a, an overall trend of people doing less collaborations these days. I remember, like, you know, I've been YouTube for over 10 years now, and back in, like, 2012, 13, and 14, collaborations was, like, everything. That's how you found new audiences. But from what I understand these days, it doesn't help anyone at all. It actually hurts your channel. Hurts like both parties. It's not like I'm worried about, you know, audience seeing some other channel or something. I gladly, gladly promote other channels all the time. Especially in Satisfactory, because people are way better at the game than me, frankly. But yeah, it seems like collaborations just kind of hurt overall now. You see, I've watched people in the Total War space doing them. I used to do them with Jackie Fish and stuff, but some of our lowest viewing content. Oh well. Anyways, um... Well yeah, intrigued to see what you have to say about it though, either way. Ten guys in this unit. So this did work at putting less in the archer unit, which is what I wanted overall. Alright, so we have these two now. We're gonna get marching. Get out here to the field of Mars. don't have version 7.1 I just have whatever the version is that press and content creators got yeah 7 0.7.002 maybe Greg is working on a version for the steam launch or something that's slightly different but this is the launch the version we were given thank you so much no problem I sent the email today so no rush oh cool no no worries then not really a collaboration so oh, okay more like a service fair enough yeah it's also, I don't, again, just so in case there's anyone else out there that might be curious, I get offers of people who want to do my edits a lot. They want to do editing. 
and then I show them what my editing is looks like, and they go, that's all right. <laughs> so, in Satisfactory, anyway, some of the recordings I do are nine hours long, uninterrupted nine hours. And I edit it down to one, maybe one and a half. Um, and it takes a serious amount of time. <laughs> so, uh, an editor for me would have to be a very much a full-time job. But if anyone out there ever wants to edit for me, or whatever, and get paid to do it, obviously, my recommendation to you would be to make an edit so I could see what you do. Otherwise, I can't. I wouldn't really hire anyone unless I could see, like, generally speaking, like what they could do first. Um, someone did that for me once, and I didn't really like the edit, so I said no thanks. You know, they made um, they basically just cut out all the ums and ahs and gaps, and it was almost like it was edited by AI. So it just wasn't really the type of thing. And then I showed them my timelines on Premiere Pro, and I'm like, this is what you would be working with if you're my editor. I'm not just anyone can. I can cut out gaps. There's nothing. <laughs> if only life was that easy. Um, but yeah, my type of content, I'm terrible at games. I make mistakes all the time, so I have to hide it, hide it with um, lots of edits so that nobody knows how bad I am. That's the idea. That's why I don't stream for a living. Because if all I did was sit down and play in my Let's Plays, then it would just be like these streams. But really, I sit down and I scrutinize over like tons of things and try to like really make like a, a proper episode as a package. At least, to me, I see the difference. I don't know if anyone else does, but... Anyways. Just putting that out there. But yeah, like I said, I'll try to get to those emails tonight. Because there's a couple others I have to get to as well. Should we put these guys in sort of like a column formation? That might look kind of cooler. While we make our way out. I'm just walking with them because ultimately their effectiveness will drop dramatically if we don't. Uh, let's go that way. Let's go through the forest. Not a big deal. All right, they're going to take a while. We'll just speed up time. Now, people are still working in the village, just not as much. So hopefully everything's still going to be okay while these guys are gone. And hopefully we don't lose too many. Why not raise knights? Why not raise Roman Praetorians? Why not raise 300 Spartans? I'm going to be a little cheeky. I'll let you answer that question. Why do you think I'm not raising knights? Why do you think I'm raising my own rabble? Why not just have the best units? <laughs> no, he might just be asking just out of curiosity. The reason is because I can't afford it. I don't have any money. <laughs> That's why. So, in order to get the men-at-arms that we talked about earlier at the manor, um, you know, if we want to raise the retinue, and I thought I mentioned this when you asked about it, but just in case I didn't or whatever, sorry, wrong button, click this, click this. It's because it costs 50 treasury per single man. We currently have zero. We have five regional wealth. If we were to tax people, we would take 10% of that at a 17% drop to approval, or 17 drop to approval, just to get 10% per month. Not of our treasury, but what they earn per month. And right now, per month, they earn, I don't know, how many houses do we have upgraded to level 2? Probably about 10 or 15. So, what's 10% of 15? 1.5? So, we'd be making 1.5 per month, and we need 50 to get one soldier. So, that's why. But we're heading out to get these bandit camps because we can get money a lot quicker that way. If we can beat the bandits. Oops, sorry. I didn't even realize it was paused. Oh shit, didn't know. No, it's alright. Yeah, it's totally fine. Uh, because his men have weak seeds and the women have small hips. We, we can't, they can't pump out knights. Hey, Christopher McGuffey. Imagine not building nukes. Just please take a look. I will. Don't worry. Yeah, I will. Zinc. I promise. I'll take a look tonight. But for now, we're just going to slowly march in the rain towards that little camp over there. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to fill your treasury money, 
so that you can spend it on mercenaries or your retinue or doing diplomatic deals, which isn't really in the game right now, but that will be in the game in the future. If you want to earn treasury money, you basically need to tax your people a little bit so that you, gain, you scrape a little bit off them every month or conquer bandit camps and you'll earn a little bit of money that way. Now with the bandit camps, you can actually choose where to direct the money. So we could actually give it to the town for regional wealth. Or we could uh, pocket it. <laughs> so these guys are moving and these guys are moving now at the same time. Does weather affect us? Who the hell knows? Now there's no, con um, what's it called? Contour line overview. So what we have to do is click to build something. And then we can kind of see contour lines, I think. It might only be in our own region though. Oh no, we can see them. Oh my god, it's so faint. It must be just incredibly flat here then. Mm, it doesn't look flat. It's just, I'll just pause it. It is so hard to see, but the contour lines are there. You can actually just about see them. I'll move my mouse over it, right? The contour lines go like that. Almost impossible to see, dude. A bit easier up here, I guess, but it's just raining and dark and miserable. Look at the screen, it's just cluttered. All right. Anyway, we have a group coming out there. That's just one man. Seven and then three and then 18. So, hold your, hold your ground. These guys can just fire it. I want you to unleash on that guy, dude. Ah! Ah! I don't know why they didn't just fire themselves. Oh. He actually didn't die. I'm going to pull back away from my own line a little bit there. Oh, he's dead. They all cheered. That's so sad. Right, there's really not much for our archers to do, but we'll tell them to fire on those units that are circling around me, the flankers. So 15v36, I'm going to tell our guys to push forward. Hard to even tell who's with who. <laughs> Alright, that's it, GG. Right. Now I'm not worried about being tired, really. We're gonna run over to the camp. Is everyone running? Nice, easy. Nice chill music now. Melia. Melija. Don't know if it's a soft J or not. Thank you very much for the channel membership. Tier 2 out of his mind over there. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. Those who don't know, if you become a channel member um, at Tier 1 or whatever, it's basically the equivalent of dropping like about 1,500 views. Your, your membership goes that far. And if you're a Tier 2 member, like a Senator, I think it's $5, right? So that's like the equivalent of... Yeah, about 4,000 views or something like that. So it you just go a long way. So I really appreciate people who've done that. So thank you. But I also appreciate people just hanging out here, of course. Um, I'm sorry if I've missed any questions. I'll try and get to them. Just ask again if I missed something. Uh, do we know when the game, how much the game will cost? No, I don't know, actually. It'll be on Game Pass, though, as well. I swear on every other channel I've watched, the first five retinue were free. They were. Ours died. <laughs> Ours were killed yesterday. So we were attacked by... 74? 74 men came running up this hill, and we defended with about 40. And it was basically a stalemate. Oh, this building's after catching fire. Oh, well. There's a tier 2 house and everything. Just a lightning bolt that hit it. Random fire. All the women are out now. All the men are away. Oh. Oh, that sucks. And not to say that the game looks bad or anything, but there's awesome animations. It might not be there for level 2, but level 1 houses will slowly burn and crumble and fall apart block by block. Like wooden log by log. And it looks great. I've actually never seen it just collapse like that. 
just to show you really quickly, because I feel like you've been denied that, let's, I'll show you what that looks like. See my workings here. So this is my Manor Lords folder footage. Well, actually, we'll just go to the rendered episode, I guess. Episode 3? Hello, everybody. There we go. So somewhere here, we have a cool fire. This is a video that went out today, actually. Yeah, so a fire happened over there. I was just, like, blown away by how good it looked. I was like, holy crap. I just stared at it for ages. Um, and then you just see, over time, it takes a little while, but you see, like, like, it's going layer by layer down. The thatch is all, like, being... Well, it's actually technically not... It's slate for these things, but it's, like, wooden slate. I, I don't know how houses are built in medieval times. Let's be real. But whatever that is, it's burning away bit by bit, and then the logs fall off, and people are trying to get their inventory out of there and stuff, and it was just really cool to see. Like, it completely collapsing. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the game crashed, actually, while I was looking at that. So maybe that's part of it, or why it didn't work. Although, when we got raided in the other stream I did the other day, which I may have just deleted that file, actually. Or this could be it here. Uh, yeah, I deleted it. We got raided, and it looked awesome. You could just see, like, ten houses burning, and they're all falling apart bit by bit. It was really cool. Um... <laughs> Yeah, just thought I'd at least show you that it's not just a building that disappears, at least not normally. But maybe it could be that specific model doesn't have a collapsing... Oh shit, another fire over there. What building is that? That's our that, uh, weavers. <laughs> just hang on just one second, because we're also still waiting for these guys to get to where they need to go. Alright, so we'll get some money out of this. I reckon we'll get that retinue repaired. So, when searching through, you find some money. Do you send it to your town, or do you send it to myself? Myself, please, on this one. That's 156. Boom. Straight up. Awesome. So, with 156, we could get three men back in the retinue, if we wanted. One, two, three. Alright. The farm, the soldiers of Farmville are, well, mustering again, I guess. And they've got great equipment. Or, like I said, you can, in the future, you can't do it now. You could recruit from your own troops if you can provide the advanced weapons and train them. Um. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't really done any of the customization stuff. I don't know, does that change, actually, like, what weapon they use? Like, if... It needs to be a pole arm no matter what, right? Yeah. But didn't... Are they all pole arm? This guy's not pole arm. I wonder what decides that. Let's give him a sword. Alright, well anyway, there's another bandit camp further to the south. So we can loop down that way and then come back into the town, hopefully. But our effectiveness is going to drop a lot. It is June. Don't want to be... Yeah, we'll run until we get to about like here. And then we'll walk the rest of the way. Hopefully that's okay. Because you just don't want, uh, you know, the town to be undefended and not productive for so long. All the men are away, and look at the, look what's happening. Look what happens with the, when you leave the women in charge. Am I right? Am I right, gamers? Ah, oh, they do a great job. They get their buckets of water. <laughs> They're handling it. men are down bad with three retinue, yeah. We're not even back at the stage of just having the five. Oh my god. <laughs> that one just went away as well. Don't crash. Good. Yeah, so as far as I know, when a house catches fire, they can never, like, save the house. Although I could be wrong. It looks like they may have saved this one. And that one too. Oh, maybe actually I should eat my words on this, because the fire that we had before in my other save... And in the raider, raider camps as well, the houses immediately turned to rubble, like in terms of the code. So you'd see them burning, but underneath it said like rubble, it's gone. Like it's not coming back. Oh shit. Uh oh. We have an attack moving in. That's on the edge of the map. Wasn't there another group of bandits up that way? I reckon 
What do you think? I reckon, so we've got these guys coming in that are going to move into our town. They might not be moving straight away, but I reckon we could get down, take out this camp, and then come back in and still defend. We're going to go for it. A little time pressure, time sensitive thing here, but I think it can, it can work. Just double check that that's where these were. Yeah, they might not move actually. Because we had that before, they just never moved. Or they took like a year and then they moved. So, might not be as intense as I was hoping for, but yeah. Anyways, back to the fires. I was slagging off the women there, but they've done a great job. Because when the men were in the town, the fire was burning. The houses were destroyed. These houses weren't destroyed. They've repaired. So, good on them. Good on them. Wow, this is uh, the reforest. The, what's it called? The uh, forester's hut? I'm doing God's work over there. Super lush. I can get off that now. Alright, cool. Anyways. He went there. I did, yeah. Just for the fun. Just for the memes. Grab the buckets. <laughs> Free nights. We're gonna get even more. So, how tired are our boys now? They're pretty tired. Let's walk the rest of the way. I wonder, can they gain back fatigue walking? They're soaking wet, negative 10. It hurts the morale, but their experience is good. Fatigue, raining, negative 40. Cohesion, plus 21. We've got good numbers, though, but we're approaching from a forest, so we won't really have the angle with the arrows. So maybe... Maybe walk and do this. Look in progress. No multiple squad waypoint just yet. Okay, sorry. Alright, so they have their outer loop. Hopefully that'll be okay. I just hope the bandits don't rush me or something. <laughs> Famous last words. God, it's miserable rain. God damn. At least um, approval is good. People are still moving in. Our population has climbed up a bit. We could almost actually um, send out even more archers. Yeah, that might be bugged or something, because it's just telling me, like, ooh, unit spotted. Or it could just be the fact that the rain was blocking them. That might be the... Oh, you know what? I think that's the original three that have been bugged for ages. And maybe they just went into a fog of war and then came back out. I think that's what happened. <laughs> I was thinking we were getting another attack. Um, anyways, let me... I've missed the chat here a little bit. You should play World Lord Britannia. Never heard of it. Man, we are down bad with Retinue. <laughs> First time watching your content, other than satisfactory, love your efforts and content, which push the boundaries on what others consider normal. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Faison. Faison Khan. Appreciate that. I'll take it as a compliment, anyway. Need one cooking, cooking skill. Three knights, grab the buckets. I'm surprised anything can catch fire in this game with how much it rains. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, you're thinking the same as Anthony. June Gloom. All right. We're back. Well, it's June in the UK, so <laughs> there is that. We want to stop all these banditry going on, so that's what we're here for. So our effectiveness is 47%. Now, I really don't know, but if we just sit here for a minute, do we regain, regain fatigue? You would assume so. Let's see if they regain it. Oh, yeah, it's going back up. We just need to wait a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean several months, I guess. <laughs> The women, the matriarchal society has developed back in our town here. And they're wondering if the men are ever coming home. I'm probably happy that they're not. Ooh, we're gonna get, s oh no. We're only gonna get three in 78 days. That can't possibly be right. Based on the growth phase right now, I suppose. I thought it said we were gonna get 78, which would have been awesome. All right, looks like we're back to full strength. It seems to be a rolling effect where it builds momentum, actually. So let's uh, move in. The rain has stopped as well now. It's better conditions for fighting. There might not actually even be any bandits here. Sometimes you just get camps without them. Which is, again, kind of anticlimactic, but I don't see any. So let's just go grab it. Now, as far as I know, they always start with troops. 
but maybe the troops moved around or something happened. The Baron on the other map usually actually goes for camps and can often wipe them out. But it looks like this is just free money for us, really. Yeah, a bit anticlimactic, but hey, I'll take it. All right. These units can come back home now. And we can run them home. Is there any other bandit camps nearby? There's one all the way at the edge of the map out there. And there's one in the north of the map, and then there's those units, of course, that we could maybe deal with in the future. Alright. Want to claim land with fertility? Well, now we could. It's easy to say that now, after we've defeated the bandits that were in all these other territories, and that we've, we've only finally, for the first time, feel, like been able to field an army that can actually fight back. Because the So we're playing on the hardest mode. For those who don't know, on this mode, you start in winter, obviously with just five families, with a massive approval hit straight off the bat, where you go down to like 15% when you're just trying to get the economy going. You're desperate to rush to, because you're going to get attacked in the first year. It says 365 days, the first bandit attack is coming in. So you've got one year, starting in winter, to get ready, right? So we had to build over here as quickly as possible. You don't have time to relocate. After dealing with that, I quickly got all the iron we could, we fielded as many troops as we could, and we fought off the attack. Fair enough. Second attack comes in a year later. Twice as big. Approval has just collapsed. Had to delete the level 2 plots because we couldn't build what they needed, which was, you know, um, a tavern. Because we didn't have enough time to get barley going and all of that, and malt house, and... Oh my god. So, really, really difficult. So anyway, long story short, after multiple attacks beating us down, this is the first time that we actually have the advantage. We have troops and units and some money coming in again. Our retinue can be built back up because they got killed. Um, you know, so it's been a struggle. So we're soon at the point where we can like, yeah, let's go colonize. Let's go do other things. Hey, we can actually get one more unit. So better than we've ever been. Or one more man. Whoop, not this one. Six. Six out of twelve. We have Thope. Who else do we have in chat? Gordo. Kind of members that is. Just Gordo. I'll just have to I can't scroll up right now, so I'll just have to wait until we see more. And we'll see if these men live or die. Um <laughs> There they are. What elite fighting force. That guy can't even get out of the gate. The gate bug is back. It's the technology just simply isn't there to get around gate bugs in these types of games. Corey! Channel membered out of his mind. Corey with a K. I didn't know yeah, I wasn't sure which one were you? I'm gonna say that one. <laughs> it's hard to tell without the armor on now. Are they gonna go? Oh yeah, it actually says. What do we got going on here? A little drill? Or just some chatting? Just some men chatting. Nothing wrong with that. Just dudes being dudes. Just dudes being bros. Just men being lads. Just Gordo. Being Gordo. Got his thick swagger walk as he goes back in there. Good evening, Hades, CJ, and Melijah. Get me in. Well, those are the first names I saw, so you guys are in. And that's as much as we have, then. <laughs> so, that was fight. That can go... So, in order of who appeared, Melijah. Melaya. Sorry again, if it's a silent J, let me know. And then we have, speaking of J, CJ. Can I rewatch the beginning when it ends? You can, yeah, because you're a channel member. These will be public to everyone in a couple of days. Um, I've been releasing videos every day, so I don't want to release streams on top of videos. I feel like it could hurt the videos, so I'm keeping them as channel membership only just for a little while. And then when there's a gap in uploads, then I'll put them back out for everyone. I never do that with streams. It's just really unusual that I'm actually ahead of uploads and I'm uploading every day. That never happens. <laughs> uh, and then we have Hades. There we go. So we have Thope, just Gordo, Ori, Malaya. I'm going to say Malaya because I like saying it. Oh, it's not a silent J. Melija and uh, Hades. A very small shield, but don't worry, he's just as big a man as anyone. 
All right, the boys are here. Get back to work. Disperse. That was a good campaign. The men are back home. The ladies be all fanning themselves like, ooh. <laughs> well, seeing if their man returned. I don't think anyone died, so it's all good. That's some of the role play I like to think is going on. But like I said, in reality, they were like, things were way better when you guys weren't here. And so the lads are like, oh, anything go wrong? Eh, we had a few fires, put them out. Unlike some people who left rubble in their wake. The cannon fodder team. They did great. Disband all those guys now. They'll put all that equipment back out to the... Uh, a unit's been spotted again. We should go deal with them. Ooh. It's different than it looks. Check this out. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. What is seven times 18? Because that's what's sitting on the edge of the map waiting for us. 7 times 18, 126. We're getting thick numbers now, but we're also getting a bit buggy, right? They're not moving, so. Although it says awaiting orders. We did see them once before wait for a year and then move. Could potentially happen, but we've had three waiting for a very long time. So that makes me think like, eh, maybe not. I'd like them to move. I want the challenge, the fun. Oh, William Lundquist. Great name. My brother's name is William. Shout out. I can't name anyone anymore. We only had six men to name. Okay, it's so just FYI. Although, if you're channel members, you'll be added into my other series as a regular person. You can rename people as well if you just go per household. You can rename Margaret here. The Big Will, you know. Um, but we're not, I'm not going to do that on the stream because it just takes ages. <clears throat> but for the Let's Play, I do it in between episodes. All right, where are we at now? What do we need to do next? Now that the wars are basically calmed down, Food is coming in. Food variety is really good, actually. Farming. It is June. Not time yet. Although, we could just put some families out there. Household-wise, we currently have 41 and 45 houses. Okay, so we've got room for more people to move in. Money, I guess, is the next thing, right? We want to start actually making money and keeping approval high. The thing that we're missing to keep approval high at the moment is making ale. Or, sorry, serving ale. We should have some. We've got 10 now. Oh man, we've got 122 shoes. That's a lot of shoes. Let's sell some shoes. Is it a... You can definitely sell shoes. Yeah, there it is. You make eight per... Oh yeah. I know you don't need to set that up, but I'm doing it. I want this guy coming by. I want you selling all... How many shoes do we have? 122? Sell them all. <laughs> Basically. And with all that money, we'll just make sure that the other trades are set correctly now. So, sidearms is set to 36 just to maintain it. We have more than that, so that's good. Just leave it where it is. The other things are set to no trade. That's totally fine. So, it's just the barley that we need a consistent income of. So, bring this up to 25. And then I think with that, we'll activate the tavern. We'll start making, serving up the ale. And we should be ahead of the ale production now, generally speaking. And... This place is going to be our next uh, harvest of barley as well, so... The yield of 12, apparently, which is ghastly in terms of how shit it is. But that's what colonizing another region will be for, right? Which we could do very soon. We just need a little bit more money in the treasury, because I think you need to set up a settler camp. And it's 250 in our treasury, so we need uh, quite a bit of money. So yeah, we really need to get approval up, then we can start taxing people. We'll just let taxes roll in. Let me put this to five. See, can we maintain 5% taxes for a while? And then continue trying to upgrade people. Yeah, these houses are all ready to upgrade. One, two, three, four. Ooh, I think I figured out what might be the drawback of putting two families in one plot. You earn one regional wealth per plot. Oh, no, it does say gen generate one regional wealth per family. Okay, so if more families move in, then it's even better. Dude, if that's the case, then these should definitely be expanded to have more families living there. In anywhere that's a level 2. Alright, we'll let those get building now for a while. If anyone wants to zoom in and see anything, let me know. Wow, we're growing in viewership every day. That's awesome. Thank you, Marnus. You can make me a girl, no worries. <laughs> 
Well, if I'm gonna name anyone in this one, they're gonna be retinue, so it's not gonna be for a little while. That's a lot of troops, yeah, 120 odds over there. We could go meet them and activate them just for the hell of it when we feel like we have the troops to deal with it. Even if an, an even number, I would do it. Just to wake them up, because they do seem to be a bit stuck or bugged, maybe. Can't wait to see the shoes being sold. Look at that, 40 shoes. Where's the trader for that? I want to... I'm going to cream myself when I see that happen. Uh, let's see. I feel like things are in such weird categories. Commodities, I guess, make sense. This is the shoe guy. He doesn't know what's about to hit him. 40 shoes. Look at the speed. He's like Ben-Hur. If it was a chariot, which it kind of is. Yeah, get in there. How much you got? 40 shoes. Take them away, son. We have six regional wealth right now. Oh. Oh, yeah. 40 shoes. 320 gold. Shout out. Only 117 likes? Yeah, drop some likes on the video. If you got nothing better to do. It, I guess it helps. <laughs> oh, 326. How good was that? We are rich. So that sorted out our barley for a long time, but also now we can set up more vegetable patches and things. Unless these houses get upgraded. Which ones don't have any upgrades? Again, we can make more shoes if we keep getting more hides. So let's go all in on goats. Excellent. <laughs> and all these ones too, right? These are just level ones. Level one hovels. Don't want to upgrade too much at once. We saw that that broke the game before, so we'll just do a couple at a time. The construction of these is super quick, though. They actually um, upgrade their own homes. 181. Love to see it. Bro, horse's name is Mazda. Zoom, zoom. Speaking of horses... We've ordered ourselves a horse. We could build ourselves a stable and see what happens. Because people wanted to see what, what do horses actually do, because we don't know. So we need a hitching post. Pop it right there. We'll change that into a stable. And we'll assign it to be uh, there for the horse. All in on the goats. The medieval equivalent of crypto. Some would say it's the Welsh equivalent of crypto. The Welsh equivalent of Tinder. Uh, I don't remember seeing the fight. Is there a part four? Or is this part four as I just finished one through three? If you're watching the Let's Play series, the third episode just came out today, and the fourth episode will be out the day after tomorrow, I think. And there'll be a fight in that one. A small one, but a fight. Black Wolf, JKU, appreciate that. Thanks very much for becoming a channel member. Yeah, we don't know what horses do. The theory is that they help with trade, but I really don't know. Because you, you can hire them right from the building, but you can also hire them on the stables themselves, so not really sure. I was here for the Welsh Lander. Yeah. One of my really good friends is Welsh. I got nothing against him. It's the only one joke I know. Actually, it's not even goats. It's sheep. I didn't even get it right. They don't know the difference, though. That's taking a while. All right. How are we doing? Are we harvesting yet? I oh, know it's still only in July, actually. I was being a bit premature putting so many people onto that. Approval's good, though. We're serving up the beer. They're loving it. So we can check our market. Fuel, food variety, clothing. The clothing is getting to everyone, but I don't really know why food isn't. You're pretty close to the market yourself, so, yeah. There's an extra trail for you. How about that? Who would have thought? Raining in July. I feel like the rain should help our fields or something at the very least. How did you get early access? Um, 
I don't know. You know, I just made videos for uh, about seven years. And then um, one day, I got an email. And it said, hey, we know that you like this game. If you'd like to get it early, we'll send it your way. And I said, absolutely. And they did it. So that's, that's pretty much the story of that. How's the game so far? I love it. I think it's great. You know, there's a bit of a content wall, but it's still really, really super fun. It's got a really good foundation, I think, to it. Um, I don't know how much the game's going to be. It all depends on the price, I suppose, for some people. But for me, it's just like, yeah, this is awesome. Just love it. Looks amazing. It's beautiful. It's realistic. It's gritty. When you get attacked, you hear everyone's screaming and running and houses are burning. It just looks beautiful. And the economy's pretty cool. But, you know, there's a lot missing from it, too. There's no cavalry, there's a lack of units, there's not many buildings. The AI's questionable, the raiders kind of bug out on the edge of the map sometimes. So it's not perfect, that's for sure. But as far as early access games go, I think it's pretty good early access, first, first attempt, especially for a solo developer. So I think it's good. Did I figure out how to expand and build walls? Uh, we built walls here. You can only build walls around your manor. And you can extend your manor indefinitely by adding more outposts. So in theory, you could possibly wrap that around. Unless there is some soft limit in there I don't know about. Um, but yeah, you open up the castle planner, you go with an outer tower, and every time you put one of these down, that radius expands around it. So in theory, you could just keep going, right? But these don't do anything right now. They're not working in the game. It says villagers shoot projectiles at approaching enemies, but they don't. Um... So it, it doesn't work right now. So in future, that would be awesome. And I'm guessing you could possibly wrap that around the entire town, maybe? I have Game Pass, so I'll definitely play it. Nice, yeah. I don't know anything about the Game Pass version. So hopefully it works as well as this. And hey, Hot Spider. Could you imagine this with RTX on? I bet it would look amazing. Um, I'm not really sure what benefits you would get with RTX on. Because we have volumetric clouds. And there's volumetric lighting as well, as far as I know. But you might be right, actually, because it uses Unreal Engine 4, that I suppose there's probably no... What's it called? Um, global illumination. Yeah, there's probably no global illumination where you get really, really dark spots. Like, here would probably be, especially like along here, the shading and shadows would be a lot darker on this side of the church than it really is. So yeah, I guess you're right. It could look even better if it was like Unreal Engine 5 or something. And with ray tracing, obviously it would be like, yeah, the reflections, of course, is the main thing people talk about, but there is reflections in the game already on the ground with the water. You can see buildings reflected in it. Now, not to the, I suppose, the quality of probably ray tracing, but yeah. it's almost there, I guess, is what I'm saying. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the game comes out April 26th for other people, for everyone else. It's really rare that I ever get anything early. For those who don't know, I'm, I'm blacklisted by a lot of companies, so... It's uh, having a game early isn't something I'm used to, to be honest. And it ha I got two in the same week. And the other one is Frostpunk, and it's tomorrow. I'll be putting that out, which is... I just can't wait for that to, for people to see it. Frostpunk 2, that is, of course. All right, anyway, 55%. Feeling good. Just went over the three-hour mark. I'm going to go another about 20 to 30 minutes max, and that'll have to be it for today. But I'm glad we've gotten things in order a lot more now. We're just trying to grow the population just a little bit more. We're growing at one per month, family moving in. And the houses are being upgraded, so we're making more money with them. But we spent all our regional wealth on upgrades. So we have tons of goat farms now. So that's going to allow us to make even more shoes to sell. Oh my god. Um, we've 91. The limit's 60. Or we've set a limit of 60. So we should be able to sell another 31. Make a bank. And we are actually we're taxing people just ever so slightly. So, to have positive approval with a little bit of taxes means every month now we'll make a little bit of money up here in the treasury. So wait for it. July feels like July has been here forever. So let's get through this, yeah? Look at that. We made two. <laughs> two gold. Hell yeah. And approval took a beating because of it. Because of taxation. Might have to go out and find more bandit camps. That's a nice way of making a decent living. There's one up here. There's one right in front of these guys. So we can have a massive battle up there. With like 100 troops or so. 100 v 100. How many people do we have? We've got 82 men. 
Hey, Orion. Oh, my horse arrived. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's actually inside the stable of the livestock trading post. So, advanced. Assign livestock. The hell just happened? Oh, there we go. Livestock. Earhart. Okay, so we've assigned him to the trader. So he might move when he's needed for something, if that's what they do. We don't know what horses do, basically. There's no cavalry in the game at the moment. Uh, so I'm just wondering, like, are they used with trade? We'll find out, I guess. Maybe if you don't set up a route, but you export stuff, people will take the horse and send them off. That could be it. Oh yeah, we're still selling firewood. We could probably st maybe... Actually, we do have a lot. I was going to say we could stop doing that, but maybe we'll just raise the limit a lot more. Everyone just rolling firewood up here like crazy. Is she going over to the horse? No. Well, we'll check back in on it in a little bit and see what happens. Speaking of actually money and stuff, we should probably think about purchasing livestock through trade. Sheep. Perhaps. And then, yeah, we could put them in the pasture that we have. It's 20 or 30 to import them. We have 90. Should we go for that? Do a little bit of sheep shearing? I kind of feel like it's not really worth it, but... I guess it's just something to do. No, you know what? It's it's not worth it right now. We'll wait for a little bit. I want to get more vegetable patches and things like that. So this is... These ones don't have any upgrades yet. So, yeah, vegetables and chickens. It's August. It's kind of a bad time to set these up, but oh well. Just for the food variety. What houses don't have things? These guys, these guys don't have anything. Get some chickens. Some of these houses are still waiting and getting their upgrades done as well. And we're gonna activate the sawmill because we don't have that going at the moment. All right, cool. How are the farms doing? So we're just in the growth phase now again, pretty much, right? Did we get much barley? We must have, and then we're just turning it into ale. We've got 10 ale. Good. At least we're keeping consistent with that. But it's kind of crazy, because approval is still kind of low. Even with the taxation, you would have expected, because we've met all the demands of pretty much everybody, that it should go up. It could just be stall problems. Yeah, let me do a bit of a reassessment of our families here. So the saw pit, that's fine. You get off that. Tannery, that's fine. Forest is fine. I think we had someone out here. You don't need to be on that job anymore. The stone cutter. The stone's depleted, actually, so that's gone. Clay is done as well. Not the deposit, but the roof tiles. Just save some of these families. Uh, yeah, wood cutting is totally fine. Keep doing that. We'll move the location of that just out here. Next up, malt house. Malt house. They're still making malt because we're purchasing barley. We'll leave them there permanently. Logging camp, that's off. That's okay. What else? Four people on the farms. Who sat down now? Although it's August, they'll do some plowing soon, actually, so maybe three on it is okay. Right, so that's a lot more hands on deck now to do building. Hey, darn. Apparently the yields from the vegetables at the backside of the house scale with the area, so it's worth to have long gardens. Yeah, that's what I've been putting into the ones that are quite... that go fairly far back. Uh, rather than these ones, I didn't do vegetable hatches there. The chickens and stuff. Uh, it's not super optimal. I've done it in places maybe that didn't need it. I was thinking about this. It needs timber. Maybe we do need another ox or something because they seem to be taking their sweet time. Where are our oxen? I don't know. This will tell me, won't it? This is their stable. Livestock. There's one. And there's the other. Okay, well, they're doing things, but yeah, maybe we should just uh, purchase another one. This hasn't even been done yet either. Yeah, why have they been so slow with it? Well, I hear lots of building, I guess, which is good. Um, right, so we'll assign another family to that, another to this. They'll set up more stalls, and that should help people get their goods and keep them longer, I think. Tends to be the way it works, so the market should grow a little bit.
Because what tends to happen is the houses closest go and get their stuff, but then the stalls get depleted. So then the people go off to get their thing and bring it back to the stall. But if you've got more stalls, then the people who are further out aren't tend to get their goods. That seems to be the way it works. Uh, so you can sort of make your market go further if you can get more stalls into it. Or you could obviously just go with smaller markets around your the outside of your town. That could work too, I guess. But that's the reason our approval is dropping. It's just because we're not maintaining this high enough, really. Not everyone is living in all these houses, but yeah, food variety just on some of the houses that are particularly far away is struggling, I think. Another ox would be cool. Yeah, I think it'd be necessary just for the overall upgrades and building we're doing. We'll just hire one just like that. Livestock order placed. Now, I don't see that horse anymore, so is he moving? Hey, he's doing something. So that's my horse, is it? Apparently so. And is this my guy? It is, it's fight. Yeah, so the horses, they work for the trader. So I guess they have a horse and cart that they load up. Okay, cool. We could get a few of those then. If we want to speed up trades. This is our primary primary source of um, money, really. We just click, can I just, available in 29 days. What about trading down here? Import one for 30. It's the same price. But I suppose you have to wait for this guy to come by. Yeah, just leave it. I'll just press that button to get more. But it's interesting, that's my trader going off to sell things to the edge of the map. I think it's... Horses are in... So basically, it seems, right? It seems that you can pay to get a permanent route to visit you. But if you hire a horse, then when you're exporting, they're not going to walk off map to sell stuff. They'll travel out. I think that's how it's working. Sometimes traders come by and purchase things, though. So I guess it can work both ways. Because we've obviously got people heading off. This is our guy. We can't see what he's carrying, but I'm sure there's stuff in that, you know? When does the game come out? April 26th. Mystery solved. Yeah, so I guess it's a way of making your trades get out of the map faster. Horses. That seems to be it. Hey, Darn, do you know uh, around how much... No, I don't know how much it's going to cost. Sorry. I haven't been told. I've always wondered about that. They must know a number or they're literally waiting and seeing what people think. And now they're like, okay, people like it. $50, you know. I was saying, personally, I think it should be 30 But I imagine the strategy tax will be implied or applied. It'll be a bit, a bit more than that. But I, I really don't know. I haven't been told. It'd be great if it was less, but who knows. I think for the state of the game now, $30 early access. Solo developer, small team, that's a lot of money for them. And then as they develop it and they put more stuff into it, they get that dynamic AI going. Just raise the price. I don't know. I have a problem with that. When you come out of early access, if it's got, you know, quality looking graphics and all the features you expect, make it a $60 game. Why not? When it comes out. Lack of entertainment. Still not bringing in quite enough. Maybe we need more people making the malt. Or is the bottleneck... How much malt do we have? Six. I feel like the brewery is just not working enough, you know? Maybe we need a second one. We gave a, an additional house here. Just to, Yeah, there are two families living here. Both brewers. Both slow. <laughs> I guess the problem is that they have to also go all the way out down there to get their malt, right? Because that's where the field is with all the barley. Transporting, I guess, can take a long time. So they're bringing it up now. It's harvesting season. We're starting to grab that barley. We don't have to import as much. We can just uh, use our own for a little bit. Before we let the field go fallow. We're only going to get fifth, about fifth, probably about 20 in total out of that. Which is so tragic. Anyways. One person, but he hired out stuff he couldn't do. Oh yeah, of course. It's not like he composed all the music himself. 
He's there banging away at the violin, hitting them drums. Meanwhile, he's animating and modeling everything in the game, texturing everything. It's not a complete solo top to bottom. It's a one-person project, so there's no team behind him. It's one person. It's like as if you, you or I were to say, okay, I'm going to open up Unreal, and I'm going to bring this all together somehow and make a coherent game. <laughs> and of course, the dude's done the bulk of the work and then imported things, I guess, and bought things that maybe he couldn't do himself and contracted work. I think the portraits and things they've been contracted, the music. Um, he has a team, or he has a, ba a group of people helping with uh, testing. Now he is a publisher, right? So Hooded Horse are publishing. They've done the localization. There's like 20 languages supported. So yeah. 60 million would be a nice boost to the project. Yeah, well, he signed a Game Pass deal. This, I mean, that's serious money as well, I would imagine. And that's already done in dust. I mean, maybe you don't get the money until you release it or something. I don't know, but I would imagine they release it in stages, but I, I don't know. Publishers release money in stages anyway, that's for sure. Dude, we can't even afford the uh, little bit of taxes we have going on now. The people are complaining that the tavern's running dry. We might need a second brewery. I was tempted to make that house a brewery. Because it's right next to the tavern, but it's too small. So what I'd have to do is delete this plot and rebuild it. So I'm going to do that. We'll make a, a brewery right next to the tavern. So this is going to have to be picked up by the ox. Moved out of the way. Once that gets moved, then we can build a new plot here that serves as the actual brewery. Maybe move the saw pit now as well, just further out of the way. Alright, let's let them get all that stuff out of the way. And then for funsies, I think we'll raise an army and we'll go out to the edge of the map. And see if we can fight those guys. It's going to take a long time to get there though. But, it's something fun to do. I won't be streaming this tomorrow. If anything, I will might be streaming Frostpunk. But I need to take a break from streaming. I need to actually bank some more videos and stuff. Yeah, I think it's, you're probably right. The taxes isn't really worth it anyway at the moment. It should get better now. They're, they're making ale. They've got the malt now. We've just had the harvest, so the barley's coming in. The malt's being made. We're going to get a second brewery because we are building up malt. We've got 13. And the ale has been a lot slower to produce. But I wouldn't really mind getting more hands on deck with that and just having more people out there. Uh, they're crafting it a bit quicker now, though, actually. Oh my god, they stole 12 pelt. Stolen by bandits. What nearby bandits do we have? I guess this territory has bandits in it. Suppose we have to go up there. Should we do that? Let's just send two units up to that bandit camp first. Although it's oh, it's going to be winter. I'll do it in, in spring, which is so far away now. But I'll keep it on triple speed. These different houses are full up with logs. So the logs can't be moved and stored anywhere at the moment. We'll just have to build another logging camp. Literally just to store logs. Because you can't store them in storehouses. These are just stored in the building itself. We'll take people off this. You don't need any more. We've got too many. 66. The sawmills are turning through them now a bit quicker as well. There we go. There they are. They're just moving it now. Perfect. We'd like to see. How are we doing for money? Yeah, we're bringing in the money. That's good. Is There's a way to tax the trader, isn't there? Trade tax. Ah, but you need it. I think you have to unlock this in the development tab. Or it's not in early access. These are all locked. Yeah, I don't know. If anyone knows that, that'd be good. Because we could... We're making a lot of money from trades. It'd be nice to just take a little bit of it for ourselves. But at the, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> at least the people have the money. Good. What did we just buy? More barley, yeah? We keep buying barley. That's fine by me. We still have 105 shoes. They can't, we can't get rid of the shoes. Got so many. 
I think goats are OP. Oh, actually, that was the wrong way around. That's the forager. There's no berries left. We could actually make herbs. Or herbs, as they say in America. Anyway. We're rich again, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 220. Look at it. It's flying up now. We'll have thousands in no time. Easy. Once you just get that snowball... It's too easy, to be honest, actually. I mean, this is the hardest mode, so it took a very long time to get here. But on normal, you can, I, you know, by episode 4 of my little Let's Play, 4 hours in... Well, let's say 5 hours with edits... I've over a thousand. I'm doing totally fine. And my main money is through the roof as well. This was a good challenge mode though. I I, I gotta say, I mean, it was mo a lot more difficult. If you want a real challenge, just throw up all those um, difficulty presets. And you'll, yeah, if you're anything like me anyway, you'll be, question you'll be struggling for a bit. Approval of the far out houses has not been met just yet. Alright, three houses left for building. That should be fine. So I said I was going to put a plot at the back here. See if we can make a brewer. In fact, if we go along the road like that, does that work? That could be the entrance? No, that's four there. Okay, hang on. Go. We need to go further back than that. So like this, and then rotate it, and then decrease the size. So that we have a real big plot, and a big workshop at the back with a second house here. Bit strange. I'd like to just maybe bring that in a bit if we could. Just awkward. So find that again. We'll do it here. Done. Trying to get it neat. <laughs> there we go. That's interesting. This little house here has another one at the back of it. And a plot. I don't know how they've managed that. But we're going to give this guy a nice big house. Single little house can just live along the side of the street here. Sure. It'd be fun to do that. Alright, two more houses. Let's go. Will there be multiplayer? I don't know. They've never said. Need more ox move supplies? We just bought another one. So I, I think we'll be okay. Do you know if they'll still be releasing updates while released in early access? I mean, the whole point of early access is to release updates. So I hope so. Weirdly, so normally every single game in early access on Steam has a page called early access that you can see on the store page and there's five questions. The questions are always the same for every game and the developer writes in their answer. And normally it's how long do you expect the game to be in early access? What plans to change? Will the price change? Things like that. And you can so sort of see their answers. For some reason, they've taken down the early access thing on Steam. And I reached out to them to ask. I was like, oh, is this going to be a full release? And they said, no, it will have early access the day it goes live. But for some reason, that page isn't there right now. Don't know why. So I don't, I can't answer the question about what they're planning on doing because they haven't said. So I don't know. One can only hope they stick with it. Keep going. Keep doing regular updates every couple of months at the least, I would hope. And uh, I would like to think he scales up a little bit, grows a small team between five and ten people dedicated to just, you know, working on some of the UI, working on some of the content, some buildings. Maybe he can work on some of the design and the programming, things like that, you know. Um, and just have them all like remote work, contract based, rolling contract based. I'm sure, I'm sure he'd be able to afford it, but who knows? I don't want to speak to other people's financial things, but you'd imagine this game seems like it'll do well. <laughs> so, one would hope uh, he could put all that into game. And he seems like a very genuine guy. Anyway, so we need this to be a level 2 house before it can be a brewer. Uh, so we'll have to just let it do its thing, get its two types of food, and then we can upgrade it. But I like that there, just being tucked in right next to the tavern. The innkeeper. And people have their ale now, which is good. Eight ale. Struggle to 
People are thirsty. What can I say? Hey, Cecilia. I feel like it's important for the game to not only sell well, but also be well received and not get flitted with negative reviews. I think the $30 price point won't help prevent that from happening. You think it should be cheaper than 30? I think anyone thinks that is crazy. There's no way it's going to be cheaper than 30. And I, I, you know, this is, I guess, each to their own, but I don't think it should be cheaper than 30. Especially if we're talking US dollars. That's, I mean, that's frankly really low, in my opinion, anyway. Um, even for a game with hype and a lot of attention on it. I just, if it was my game, I mean, maybe you could think, you could, you could toy around the idea of 24.99 or something, but... If it was me, I don't know why, I guess, but it feels right based on what I've seen and the quality of it, even though there's a content barrier and it's early access, but it feels right to me. I would be like, this game should be 30. That's what I would say. Knowing that, my judgment is usually always a little lower than what it often is. So it'll most likely be 40 or like Bitmark says 45. Oh, I totally disagree, Grimshaw. I don't know how people could say it should be cheaper. The, the dude's been working on it for seven years, you know? And even forgetting what the person... Work, let's for, let's divorce ourselves of the person working on it and the team and anything like that. I just think the game alone warrants $30. But I guess it's, you know, I suppose there's no rule about it, right? It's like... <laughs> Red Dead Redemption is $60, you know? So does that mean now every game has to have as much content as Red Dead Redemption? That's 60 it's all about the value proposition and also like the market reality of like what other games are doing this and do they do it to this fidelity and is it as good and what do they price themselves at? How much is far this frontier, you know? And how much is Banished now? Banished is probably cheaper. So it's all relative, I guess. Anyway, so we don't know the price. It is on Game Pass, so you can play it for pennies on the dollar if you want. But in my opinion, um, and it's just an opinion, 30s would be a nice price for it, I think. And 40 would be like... All right, a little expensive for where you're at now, but I could see you getting there. That's how I feel about it. And then I think for the potential of this, having it, if you had a true dynamic AI and you had multiplayer, multiple maps, I'd be totally, re say 60, you're fine by me. You had cavalry, every unit is represented and all that. Yep, that'd be fine by me. You'd be as good as an Anno game then, and those games are 60, you know. Anyway, each of their own. I'm talking US dollars, so, you know, to be fair, I live in the UK. I'll be paying sterling. I got sent the game, but I plan on buying it so I can put my money where my mouth is with that and giving it to someone or gifting it or doing something with it. Yeah, £24.99 would be the sterling price, right? So, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? I guess the best way to probably tell, and sorry to go on about this for so long, is just if you look at other, other hooded horse games, they're going to be the ones setting the price, most likely. Usually publishers are. I don't know their deal with, with um, Slavic magic, but uh, you'd imagine they're setting the price. They're doing the marketing, all that kind of stuff. So if their other games seem expensive, then this one will too. Like Slytherin, for instance, are notoriously expensive, in my opinion, for the quality of their games. It's just that they've got a very hardcore audience, so they tend to do that. And they do have deeply replayable games, but just the quality is a bit low, in my opinion. So it all depends on the publisher, you know? Anyway, we want developers to see the genre as profitable, so 30 pounds, early access, fine. 40, 50, full release, depending on the content. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's where I fall. Imagine a map and environment that would actually change over time. So, you know, in on his Twitter, he's shown an environment where it's a desert region, and it's called, like, the Crusader region, and apparently, like, you'll be able to send... You know, the, I guess it's all ideas right now, but he did show it, and he, it was a 3D environment that he was moving around, troops around. And I guess the idea is, like, you're supposed to... You know, the king will mess... So, there's all this stuff in the game. Let's just hang on for a second. <laughs> just to talk about maybe some of the poten potential here. Potential. Part 3. I'm going to load my other save, which is the other mode where there's another AI Baron in the game. Although he's not building towns, but he's moving armies around. Those are the level 3 plots you can get, by the way. Love them. Absolutely love them. Anyways, just wanted to check something out here. So we can see the AI's conquered all these territories, and there they are there. Hildebolt von Berenut. The idea is that you're supposed to do negotiations with them. So you go like... I'm playing without UI scaling, so 
can barely even see the number, but it's like, that's the amount, drop it there, and then you send it. Now this is all, none of this works. <laughs> so work in progress, early access, not working. But the idea is that you're supposed to also get like the king's favor and talk to the king this way. And then I think the idea is that like they're called to crusade and you can give a portion of your troops to go off map for a while and fight another battle somewhere. Now, how does that work? I don't know. Like, do you load into another region or is it, can you hot swap between them like Anno? I would imagine you're loading and maybe it saves an instance of this one while you go fight or something a few battles. But you could just, you know, it's just potential is just, that's why I say it, it's just can go in so many different directions. It's like, okay, you have, if you had dynamic AI where they're conquering things, building their own settlements that you're attacking, and potentially three or four lords on a map, different maps, potentially crusades, religious focus, possibly all, you know, multiple religions, maybe you can have Muslim factions or whatever, because this is very Eurocentric Christian focus, but why not in the future have something that's, um, yeah, more representative of Muslim or Islam faith or whatever. And then you can maybe play that way. And then you're battling the, the Christians on the other side of things. Who knows? Maybe that's just like never going to happen. But he did show, quote, Crusades region and showed like a little teaser of like a desert and stuff. So it's on his mind at the very least. <laughs> so who knows where it's all going to go. But I just thought I would show that to show like not a lot of it's hooked up right now. Which fair enough, right? It's like, okay, I don't add brownie points for some features that don't work but i'm saying like well clearly that's the focus of where he wants to bring it which is why a, um, a roadmap would be nice so we could know when we're getting what or when he thinks we'll get what i was worried for a long time i followed the game in development for a while and a lot of the time he's saying i'm reworking this i'm reworking this reworking this and i'm like dude just rework it when it's in early access just get features in and then figure it out <laughs> that's what i would do rather than going like because you know this tree has been reworked two or three times or something and then how you levy units there's it used to be a brewery building that's gone now now it goes into the back of other buildings and i'm not saying that they're not good changes but it's like is, was that really a priority to redo the brewery could you not have maybe just left the brewery in and focused on how much time went into that do something else <laughs> i say it all with the the most love behind it by the way it's all the a criticism of like uh I just want you to get more stuff done and out quicker, you know, basically. It's all like, ah, oh, good stuff. I'm not like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Because I do think that change was actually really cool, having workshops at the back of houses and they sort of make their own goods and they get their own stuff. It's very interesting. Like, the regional wealth to normal wealth disparity is quite cool. It's like, oh, we want our town to grow and prosper themselves. We loosely manage it and then we draw from them to get our taxes, our influence, uh, and then levy our troops and send out people and stuff. I love all that. It's super cool, so... Just want more. Just want him to do more faster, you know? Anyway, thanks for the entertainment, Darren. See you later, Just Gordo. I'll be back with Frostwing. Awesome. Love to hear it. This is the exact version that will be sold now, as far as I understand it. Yeah. There might be some bug fixes as, as in terms of difference, but in terms of content, I think this is it. Yeah. Sigma Wraith Fate, Gork and Mork. I just saw that now. That's funny. You have to stream late. It's better than missing and see it. Hey, hey, Brian. Looks like you're still alive. Yeah, we managed to survive. I think um, I'm just going to go to... Oh, I don't really have time, actually. I should really be wrapping up in a moment. But if we can get to March and send a unit out, even if I just save it and ru rush these guys, it'd be fun to have a little battle at the end of the stream here because I won't be playing on stream this game again for another couple of days at least. It'd be fun just to have a bit of silliness with it at the end. Uh, but this has been great. We managed to turn it around. We brought in all the weapons we needed. We fought off a big attack in the fields. Actually, that was nice. We went out and conquered a couple of bandit camps. We've um, sold shoes, made huge profits. <laughs> uh, we've brought 130 people into the town. Still struggling to keep that entertainment going. They have their ale now, but they just drink it so damn fast. It's really difficult. And we're paying a lot of money to bring it in. And we leave the field fallow and everything, but just the... Um, Fertility is just not simply good enough. We need barley somewhere where it would be super great, like out here. Turn that entire region into a giant field. Which you can do. You don't even have to uh, uh, um, take a region that you're connected to. You can get one that you're not connected to. But we need 250 gold up here to, before we can actually claim another region. Now we might be able to get that. There's two camps out that way. So if we go out and attack those camps, we'll get some money. We'll sa save it up. See how we get on. Maybe we can expand to another region and finally bring in barley, satiate the demand for ale. Or if we can just find another way of making a lot of money, we can just buy barley constantly or consistently. And that is another way around it. 
What are you missing? You're still missing your second food stall. Let's set up another guy here. They all have market stalls now. Wow. Yeah, I feel like we need just more storehouses to set up more stalls so that they can supply multiple goods. I'm just trying to advance through time now because there's not much for us to do. We're waiting for fields to kind of grow and just for trades to happen and passive money to be earned. So, ain't that much we can do. But as we build up stockpiles of too much of anything, we can just obviously sell a little off the top. What we've been doing with shoes. Anyway, have you heard anything about needing a crazy spec out PC? No, there's, um, I've heard. The only thing I've heard is that you don't need a crazy PC, actually. Ooh, there's a different army coming in from the east. Are they moving? They are. Okay, cool. This will be the attack we'll have then. Nice. We actually get a little bit of combat against. There's just four raiders. I would have thought we'd be seeing more by now. We had an attack of five once. But after, since then, we've only seen four coming in at a time. So they're coming in from the northeast. Uh, yeah. Alright. It's actually kind of the same place as before, so we might just defend against our farms again. Once they get closer. Anyway, yeah, so long story short, I've only heard that the game apparently runs quite well on lower tier PCs. I haven't tried it, but the specs are for relatively low. It's, you need a 1070 to play the game. Now, how does that work when the city gets really, really big and you want to run on good graphics and zoom in? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I have a good PC, I, so I just haven't been able to test it on anything else. But it runs great for me. And this is as big as I've ever gotten, and I'm streaming all at the same time from the same PC. And I have no problems. We haven't seen any frame drops or anything. I think maybe sometimes in the tree lines you can get frame drops, which is quite a common thing. But nope, for me it's actually still totally fine. Sometimes with lots of trees and branches you have a lot of repeating alphas on top of each other's. So the game is trying to like, um, your GPU is basically trying to calculate what's behind this alpha, and then behind that one, and then behind that one, and then behind that one as it's figuring out the draw distances. So when you actually put something like this in front of your screen, your GPU is not drawing what's behind that. Right? It's all just done frame by frame. You can never catch it not doing it. Um, so that's why when you have lots of trees stacked on top of each other, you get all these alphas blending and you have a low frame rate. So I've seen that dip a little bit back then. And that's why also VFX can be really taxing because they've all got like smoke effects and that's all alpha channels that you're trying to calculate. But even when houses were on fire and we were being raided, it ran totally fine. The minimum specs, according to Spartan, are 4th gen i5 AMD FX processor, which makes no sense. And GTX 1050 RX 460 also makes no sense. Why doesn't it make sense? What, those two things are totally different than each other? Or are you saying it makes no sense because it's so low? The game is built on Unreal Engine 4. How much do you feel like you have to worry about farms? I like rotations from Father Frontier, but the yield modifiers are kind of annoying. Yeah, so you have crop rotation here, and you can set the second year and the third year. It's not as detailed as Father's Frontier in that regard. And there's no way to clear out the weeds and do the other things like fertilize it. Or you could fertilize it if you level up your farming categories. So you can get the heavy plow, but you can also get, which one is it? Fertilization. So it allows you to put fences around your, pasture, uh, your fields, and when they're fallow for a year, then your sheep will graze it. And the fertility will go up. So there is a bit of depth there for farming. And the scale that you need to do it at is bigger, I'd say, than Farthest Frontier. Which I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's more, it makes it more difficult. Um, so yeah. So I don't know. Maybe again a bit more another update or two and they'll be a bit more fleshed out or something, but just how the houses get constructed in place, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Where you see them all go up bit by bit. And how they burn down bit by bit too. Come on, dude, get your second bit of something. This, I guess there is actually nothing really available. That's fair enough. <laughs> Raf, Rafe, Raf, appreciate the channel membership. Thanks today. It's probably the most channel memberships I've ever gotten in a stream, so thank you. And some super chats too, actually. You don't get that many uh, super chats generally. You see some streams and it's just like every second chat is a super chat. I don't, and I, and the streams aren't even that big. I think it's often, well, first off, I don't stream very often, so that's fine. But I think it's often as well that streamer doesn't really read the chat very often, and, which fair enough. And they just read the super chats, and just the community's just like in that habit. Uh, but these have been very fun and very good streams for me. I'm super happy with how they've done. So I'm glad people also seem to be responding well and enjoying them. I kind of wish I could have streamed it again tomorrow, but I might be back with Frostpunk. 
which is going to be so awesome. <laughs> I could just, it's going to be great. Talk about a struggle. Holy crap. That is going to be great because we're going to be running polls and it's all about like politics and stuff and making choices. So we'll have a polls in the chat. You guys will be voting and deciding on what goes on. It's going to be sick. Anyway, is there a way to watch previous live streams? Unfortunately, for these ones, no. Almost always, I always put my live streams up just immediately after they're done, right? Because you know, why wouldn't you? But hey, Jamie Kel, appreciate that as well. Five gifted memberships. I'll read that in just one second. But yeah, just as other people have known, I'm uploading videos every day this week. Normally, I don't do that. I normally only ever upload two per week. But I've been just banging them out for Manderlords because there's not really much prep work that goes into it. I just kind of play and chat and edit a little bit. And I had it early, so I was able to prepare in advance. Anyways, because I have videos queued up, when the streams end, I don't want to make the streams live because I've heard releasing multiple videos on the same day doesn't do that well. Um, so because of that, the streams aren't available. But if you're a channel member, they are because you can just kind of get them that way. That doesn't really count towards the algorithm. So they'll be made public in like a couple of days basically when I inevitably have a gap in the schedule again just whenever whatever one day it doesn't have a video I'll just shit out all the streams immediately <laughs> basically which will probably be like Tuesday or Wednesday now if you want you want to hear from me and you want um a bit more of a focused playthrough where I'm not distracted by you know reading chat and stuff I recommend checking out my let's play it tells you everything you need to know in the game Basically, got a let's play for it, right? So episode one, two, and three, or the other way around, is it? No, it is that way, yeah. So one, two, and three. So I recommend checking those out. It's edited, it's focused. I talk about like how everything works and then we just kind of get through playing it. It's edited whenever that things are just a bit too slow and nothing's happening. And then there's also moments where we zoom in and enjoy the details, less compression. So if you're, you know, hungry from con for content, obviously there's tons of channels out there, but I also have like a series going if you can't, couldn't catch the streams, which are here under the members only thing at the moment. All right. Uh, turn that off. There we go. Now, thank you. So that's gone to LM Mayo, Luke Bain, Anthony Lorenzen, Siaf. Oh, I can't say that one. Siafi? The Occur. And Ben. Bethaname. Ben Bethaname. And that was gifted by Jamie Kel Burns. Thanks. And shout out to Jamie Kel. Always gifting subs and dropping supers. Dropping fat stacks. Really do appreciate it, though. It's gone above and beyond. And he is an esteemed senator, I believe, as well. Check out the website for that. Uh, anyways. And by the way, Ben, or um, Jamie Kel, if you're in the Discord, sorry if I said this already, but if you are, you can be given that esteemed senator role. I believe you have it. That's for people who've donated more than 101 go at a time. And I think he did that a while ago, so. Be handled. Uh, anyway, you can make a channel that just re-uploads of the streams. I, yeah, see, basically, I never upload daily. This is just not a thing. I like having the streams as videos on my channel. It's very, 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 very unusual. This is the first time it's ever happened where I have a video every day and I'm streaming each day as well. It's purely because I got sent the game early, so I was able to do that. I'm blacklisted by Paradox and by Creative Assembly. I never get things early for strategy games, but this normally never happens. <laughs> so I'm not going to make a channel for it just because it's never probably going to happen again anyway. Um, this is just a rare, a really, and it's a really odd week in the fact that Frostpunk and Manor Lords both sent me things and had it in the same week. That's very unusual, so. All right, anyway, sorry, I should slow down. The guys are basically here. Let's get these, the army together. We'll fight this battle and we'll call it a day. We're going to go with soldiers first. 36 out of 36, and then two archer units. And then we'll just have to deploy them out here. Now remember, we named our retinue after some of the channel members. So if they die, they dead forever. And that's just it. But we'll keep an eye out to see which ones live and which ones don't make it. There are six right now. All right, we're ringing the bells. So we got attacked from this direction a little bit before, but from less units. What we're going to have to try and do is make our way out to this area roughly, stand on the hill, and protect any of these buildings from being burned. It looked like one of the units went off this way and two are coming in this side. Right, let's just get them over there. The 
assembling on the field of Mars. Let's also... Turn up the music a bit. Just in case they get the jump on me, send those guys out first. Tell these guys not to run, want them to walk. Just get in line next to that thing. These guys might be my flankers. Chads. Sunrise. Yeah, we got one on the left. Might anchor ourselves something like this then. I don't want to spread too wide. Maybe buff up that side with the retinue, just in case. All right. I don't know if there is collision with that thing. Can we draw two lines, actually? Yeah, we can. Pick up the, the one thing I'd be afraid of is this unit will come for this guy, so I might... Oh, I'll just stick with it. Whatever. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> so we'll stand our ground. Hold your ground. Yes. Your the first shots are going off. You know what? Let's just go. <laughs> Come around this way and help these guys on this side. So those guys are over there now. Turn these guys to face them. So one unit just broke immediately. Oh, this happened before. Our music has gone off. Hang on. I don't know why that happens. Or basically kind of resets itself. Let's just get uh, the regular music back up. Check to see if your towers are working. We looked at them earlier. They're not. We tried putting, um, what's it called? Uh, um, archers inside of them and it didn't work. I don't think it works in the game yet. Uh, just bear with you. I'm just getting the game soundtrack back up so that we can get the battle music going. I have just a weird thing with, I think it's so awkward when no music is playing. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, we're back. I kind of feel like you need to make arrows as well. You don't have to in the game, but it feels like you should. Don't let him engage the archers. Don't let him do that. So that first unit broke, the other one Still engaged. Let's get them in the back now. So what you can do with the archers is you can tell them to shoot at will so they don't fire in volleys. And then they'll also do friendly fire if you tell them to as well. Just going to tell them to stop firing now. You're okay. Can we hold? I don't think you can actually turn off fire at will completely though. Will these guys get killed or are they just going to push their way through? I don't think anyone fights anymore now when they're routing. It's not like Total War when they're routing they basically just kill everybody. It seems like when they start routing in this game, they let them go. Because I can't fire on them anymore. That's so silly they run into our town. But yeah, that's it. GG. Defended. Didn't lose a single retinue, Knight. We did... L did we lose any of these guys? I don't think so. No, 28 out of 28. I think that's just the way it was. Yeah. Alright, GG. A little anticlimactic, I feel like, fighting the raiders. You can have bigger battles if you fight the Baron so far. But it did say that more... The waves are supposed to just keep getting bigger and bigger. And this is supposed to be a harder mode than the other one. But it does look like we're never getting more than just four at a time. Maybe it just takes a while. This is probably like our, what? Eighth year? Yeah. So eight years have gone by and we're still just getting attacked by four units. I feel like we've been getting attacked by four since year four. I'm just a bit surprised we haven't seen a bigger attack come in. Not that we this is like the first year we can even deal with it, so I'm happy, but it's just interesting how it's not speeding up or um growing in strength, I guess. I wonder if you could build the towers on that field you've been fighting in these past couple times, see if the A ignores your troops and tries to attack them instead. Yeah, that might happen. Don't know. They tend to just go for whatever buildings they get closest to first and burn them. They just try to burn everything they run past. 
We have the um, corpse pit people out there now working away. Unfortunately, again, there's no model for the body that they carry. There is a model for the body on the ground. They're going out to the corpse pit to dump them. Have to get down and survey the battlefield. Is there going to be an Anno 1800 late uh, Let's Play? Another one? Probably not. Maybe before the next Anno game comes out. I would consider doing another one, but depends on my schedule at the time. Right now, I'm just busy with other games. Like, I love Vano 1800, but, you know, I did kind of everything I wanted to do in that Let's Play, so... I'm not a very good YouTuber, you know? YouTubers just milk everything until there's nothing left. And that is very much what you're supposed to do, because it, you just build an audience for something and they just keep coming back. But I like to just, you know, give my finger to the audience and say, I'm going to switch game now. <laughs> Which I guess leaves you with people um, who are there for you and not for the game in some ways, but 90% of people do leave. <laughs> uh, but no, in, in all seriousness, I think um, I'll probably probably play Anno 1800 again when the new game gets announced. And if the new game is anything like Rome or Greeks, Come Greece or something, double. ancient Keep classical antiquity, as I said yesterday, I'm going to shit. Just straight up. You might even see just like, I might just make a whole channel just for that. So, and if that game isn't good and it's Roman, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Let that go on record. Ubisoft. <laughs> All right. Anyways, that's gonna have to be it for today's stream. I really do appreciate everyone hanging out with me and listening to my antics and rantings. Um, and for supporting all these videos and series so far and the let's and the um, streams, I should say, it's been great. Really enjoyed it. Now, I'll be back in a couple days. We'll continue the stream again. We'll go after those guys on the edge of the map. Maybe that will trigger a way, a proper wave to come in because there are six units out there just sitting there. Um, so it's 120 men. So you want to go out and fight them. But the only other thing I want to do is just bring in more population because we can only field as many people who live here. And at the moment, there are 82 people, 82 men here. I think some people might have actually died on our side then because there were more before. Anyway, with 82... Yeah, we should be able to get that up to 120 males. And with 120 males, then we can field like as many units as them, basically, and have a bigger pitch battle and clear out some of the bandit camps out that way. There's two there. And perhaps, you know, claim these territories then with influence. We saw that there's great fertility out there. Set up farms, scale up, and then conquer the entire map. All right. That is going to be it for me. Thanks again for hanging out with me. Remember, tomorrow... I, that's exactly it, Martin, by the way. I try to do what I enjoy. I don't want to get burned out and playing one game over and over, even if I like the game. You'll end up hating it if you do that. And trust me, I've spoken to content creators that would never tell you this, but behind the scenes, they hate the fucking game they play because they only play one thing. So, But they make a lot more money than me, so, you know, <laughs> swings and roundabouts, I guess. All right, that's going to have to be it. Thank you again very much for watching. I'll be back Frostpunk 2 tomorrow. Trust me, you'll want to see it. Because it's fucking awesome. All right, that's it. Goodbye.